Hey everyone, Ben here from the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to the final match of Lockdown Bowl, uh, a charity tournament run on fumble by Rob from Secret Carnage involving stunty teams, secret teams and uh, 22 of the craziest coaches um, that pay attention to the internet. Uh, joining me on the line, we've got Matt's BBL. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Uh, this is a crazy game. Uh, I love these skinks. I've, I love you... the skink theme. Did you get a chance to play either of these teams? Uh, I did not. The the Dark Elves, I was like, I think two bonus points away from playing at some point. But Ooh. the Skinks just, <laughs> the Skinks rocketed <laughs> to the top of the ladder. I was nowhere near them. Yeah, no, that was my fault. Um, the, first, <laughs> <laughs> the first round of the tournament for this team, uh, was it, it was only 2-0 which I think is quite good against my against my Snotling team. But um, the game tonight is going to be Skinks from the Secret League against uh, Dark Elves from, well, you know and love Dark Elves. Let's have a quick look at the uh, the rosters, Matt. So starting with the Lockdown Brawlers, this is the Dark Elf team. They've gone 3-0 and so far, so this is the last game. They are at the very top of the leaderboard with all the points. They've got seven points with a plus six differential. Uh, just to put it into context, the Skink team is at five points here with a plus 14 differential so a win for the skink team we give them seven and as long as they don't lose a bunch of casualties they would get them on tiebreakers so it's really a win and in situation lockdown brawlers though we've got four blitzers here two blodgers one tackle and actually three blodgers the witch elf is there with block and as a dirty player lineman two assassins on an eleven-player roster with three rerolls, this is a heck of a dark elf team, Matt. Yeah, only eleven players at this point in the tournament, which I think is due to a couple of deaths or a couple of like, um, yeah, m minus. I think there was a minus edge witch elf. Uh, yeah, he, he, the team got beat about a bit. He played a couple of games with um, with with journeyman, um, and it didn't didn't stop Gothmog here. Didn't stop Gothmog at all. No, he, he's played through it really well. Uh, <laughs> Um, only yeah, so only eleven players. So if if if, if the Croxigors can start removing people, that, it that. could it could like spiral pretty quickly. That is going to be it. Is going to be all about the Croxigors, I think, today. And talking of Croxigors, we have got get your Crocs out. This is the Skink team from the Fumble Secret League. So all Skinks, no Saurus, but a ton of Croxigors. We've got four Croxigors here, one with Block and one with Guard. So they're going to be doing some serious damage if Bonehead doesn't hold them back. Um, Widrum has been hampered by Bonehead quite a little bit. Um, yeah, quite a little bit in his games. It's been interesting. Um, he's got a whole bunch of Skinks. We've got a Sidestep Chameleon Skink, and these guys are his star players, wouldn't you say? The Red Crested Skinks, Matt. Yeah, they're great. I don't, I don't know if they've done the most work, but it feels I'm like watching they have. the game too much. But um, <laughs> it feels like they have. They're fun, and one of them's got wrestle, so that is a a really good. Um, oh, it's a great like skill. cage breaker. A great skill uh, on a with, stunty with player. So uh, the red crested skinks are just normal skinks, except they come with dauntless. For 20k. So you save 10k on that because I think Dauntless is a is that general, isn't it? So they get yeah. for 20k Dauntless. It does not a massive difference, but they can do some serious work, uh, especially now there's a, uh, um, a guard Croxigore. So look for Angel here, player number six with the Wrestle to be uh, the main blitzer. Uh, chameleon with sidesteps. So two Chameleon Skinks, one, two, three, four Ordinary Skinks, two Red Crested, and four Croxigores. So going to be a big interesting team here um neither team got much of a bench uh, rob's in chat hey rob the the skink team i think actually has the advantage with um um inducements though because they uh, at this point in the tournament it's just put all of your treasury into um that is true inducements and they've got 150k treasury so all right their guys are in to fumble now so we can jump in yeah, and yeah. yeah like you called it they are buying inducements now i was chatting with widrum earlier today he was tempted to splash the cash and pick up drool and dribble for 
full for full blown skink superiority. Um, the is difficulty, that the, the stab and the dirty player one. It is indeed. The difficulty right. with that is that would have given um, a, a, would a hundred percent have given enough cash to Gothmog to take Roxana if he wanted. Uh, and that is a that is a risky play because Roxana right. with frenzy and Edge Five could just tear this team apart. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, joining. They're, they're both teams with like quite good star players, aren't they? They, uh, they're both tier one teams. Well, actually, Lizard yeah. tier uh, one. Skinks, I don't know. I mean, they've certainly done really well. Uh, they're we're, based we're, off a tier one team. Yeah, Widrum in so. chat says, "Hey, evening guys. Quick pop in to say hi. See you after the game. Best of luck to you both." Best of luck to you both, I think is probably the fair way. Because, I don't know, like, we've just finished recording uh, the next episode of the podcast that's coming out on Saturday, and it's all about Dark Elves. But also, we love uh, secret teams, so it is a, an interesting one. Okay, we've got the inducements in now, Matt. Uh, yes, we have. What have we got? Uh, a Wandering Apothecary, a Keg and a Bribe. Interesting. So we're going to see the teams... Uh, really, just be the teams here. Uh, fame plus one for get your crocs out. And the Apo, presumably to keep a, a knocked out or a badly hurt that's still yeah. in the game. There's a, uh, a bribe here for Gothmog. That's weird. Um, that's interesting. It, you'd think. Oh, he's got a, a dirty spot, player. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, he's got a dirty player on his line mm -hmm. and he's only got 11 so I imagine he's going to take the opportunity to foul a Crocs off and just use that bribe to keep him on the pitch hey you know me though 150k there I would have gone for a wizard all day long <laughs> but then I'm not number yeah. one in this tournament uh, so <laughs> and Goff Mog is uh, only 20 out of 22 uh, you're I've, not doing too bad I have never I have never dropped I've never gone up that far have I, I have oh because the dwarves are taking their, their other loss all oh, right Oh, well, that's, uh, you know, it's kind of going for the race for the bottom with the pump wagons. But the pump wagons could just couldn't let me down. It was amazing. Just rolling around, picking up the ball. It was ridiculous. Um, all right. So it's going to be 12 skink team and 11 dark elf team. No cards, no wizards, no stars, just team versus team. So that makes it slightly easier for us, Matt. What's... um. Let, yeah, let's... I, can cl I can close my tab with the uh, the cards. <laughs> oh, that's been a real, that's been a massive help to us this tournament, though. That, you you being Johnny on the spot with the cards, you're like, I've got this, because uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, Matt, we know what the guys are lining up for. Uh, Widrum has is receiving to start the game off. So Dark Elves are kicking away. What's your prediction for the game? And also, what's your I... numbers, please? <laughs> I don't have uh, uh, any prediction for this game I because I don't I haven't played much against Dark Elves so I, I really don't know how Dark Elves play that much um, I, I hope that the Skink team wins I I, I, <laughs> I feel like I should be not biased but I hope <laughs> the Skink team wins because uh, they're really fun <laughs> Hey Nathan uh, in chat how you doing? Yeah no I'm <sighs> I feel like the the skinks are the slight underdogs here. We've got a we've got a brilliant dark elf team and a brilliant dark elf coach. Dark and... elves are like the, the the top team, aren't they? Like considered. To I think be. I think top top three top three there. Top three like those yeah. wood elves and some something else. Yeah, that, that that third one floats depending on how you feel about it. Either undead or skaven normally, but um, right. Yeah. I like it. Right, so we've got a setup here. Now, we've seen Gothmog use this um, internal um, centred defence, the 3-3-5, before no, leaving the wide zones open because he gets an opportunity here with Frenziers to just pile in and um, and apply that pressure wherever he, wherever he decides. So the Skinks are going to have to do some serious caging. So it's going to be down to Widrum now to deploy to counter and three Croxagores against three Dark Elf linemen. That's not looking good for the Dark Elves. <laughs> yeah. I think this goes to your your prediction is if the Croxagores open up here and remove three Dark Elves, that could be a well that's that could be game. Now the Dark Elf team has got one apothecary and the lizards have two. 
man, I'm excited about this game. This is going to be yeah. Great. I I think the 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 dark elves aren't in as bad a position as they could be because they're dark elves as opposed to like high elves or um I think it's high elves the the ones that well what else or the other one that don't have as much armor because oh, the armor rate is is just going to be a massive bonus. Cause... Well, you say that, but this team has got four. Armor seven guys. He's got two assassins and two witch elves, or is it just the one witch elf? Just one witch. Just elf. one witch elf. So, so yeah, you're right. The armor eight could be brilliant here. Could make. But all the the, the witch elves lodge. So that's that's assuming that it's like armor seven, assuming you can knock it over. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. Okay, so we are deployed on both sides. We've got two skinks deep. Angel right in the middle there. Not going to be all that useful in the first half um, if he can make this go long. But it's going to be ball into the midfield and a high kick means high kick. that Widrum is going to be able to put a guy exactly where he wants him so I'd expect to see one of the two back skinks uh, deploying underneath the ball yeah. to try and get the catch um, do you think it's going to be a quick score here for Widrum do you think that's the game I plan th I think I think that's I think that's what I'd do because you want to get if, if you get an early if they get an early touchdown in that's a lot of pressure on the dark elves to equalize and then get the other touchdown and win and i think th this game is going to come down to a lot of the um either the dice if we get a boring game and the dice just completely <laughs> destroy someone or the psychology of it if if one of them can psych the other out or get an early lead and make the other make mistakes that yeah. could be it i think in a prolonged engagement the dark elves have the agility and the armor and and the speed to some extent to really just take it so a defensive yeah. a defensive turnover for the dark elves early in the game would be huge and a whole bunch of removal here from uh from the lizards would also be pretty pretty key so first turn here for get your crocs out widrum Bull's in a pretty safe position i'd be tempted to go for some murder here and it starts <laughs> uh, so opening up with a push pal there mighty blow just just uh puts him down both down both down is that the block Sigur? No, it has to burn the reroll. Skull pushback, so just a push. And this Lucky is. Lucky those things aren't loner. Oh, yeah, I know. That's such a massive, massive bo uh, bonus to this team, which is why I do think this is probably a tier one team. Pushback, pushback. Those Dark Elves surviving the onslaught of three clocks. Uh, three Croxagors. I imagine Widrum was hoping for at least one removal there. He's still got uh, another Croxagor in reserve ready to blitz. But no, it's going to be a red crested skink. Gets dauntless, gets two dice. Pow push will drop that guy down. And stunned. Stuns him. Red crested skinks all the way for Widrum. His absolute. And moves back into the midfield. <laughs> yeah. We got, I think we're going to see a really safe skink cage here. Dark Elves, as great as they are, really kind of can suffer with movement six. And where he's gone with a, a kind of midfield deployment, uh, if you look at their strike range, they are miles away from the ball. Yeah. Uh, the the main kind of the, the the main kind of attacking force on the on the dark elves is uh it, it's the witch elves and the blitzers and and they're only I mean compared to other elves they're movement seven. Yeah, so, they're, they're brawlers. They are brawlers for elves. Yeah. Um, now these these blitzers are phenomenal. They are some of the top players in the game. And interesting thing to note, we've got two assassins here. Now, assassins against armor 7 can be a whole lot of fun. I've been doing some streams recently trying out a heavy assassin team on Dark Elves. And uh, against armor 7 foes, you have a really great time. So, yeah. if those uh, assassins um, tag some skinks, we could see some free removal. Um, okay, the so... Only problem yeah. Is that they don't they um they don't want to put the dark elves too they, they don't want to overextend with the dark elves just to get someone off the field because that could end up trading a stab uh, trading an assassin for a skink uh because yeah. any of these dark elves move out of field they're going to get punched by a croc skull <laughs> exactly now that is a pretty reasonable cage there with two red crested skinks and three croc uh that's a deep yeah. cage it's going to be interesting to see what Gothmog does here okay move move to tag the top side it's a blitz here it's a big three dice pow gets the natural pow could be the first skink out no, it's the tackle uh the tackle blitzer to keep a uh, dodge from oh, working i think we're going to be seeing him do a similar thing for absolutely he could just be striking taking one skink out that is a knockout so down to 10 to 11 on the pitch 
Uh, but that is the Blitz. That's all they can do. So it looks like Gothbog is just going to screen here. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see him tag some players with the Assassins. But there's only really one guy loose, which is that Clayton with the sidestep down in the bottom. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. So we've got the Blitzer here. That is a... So the Tackle guy is at the top. The rest of the Blitzers are all bludgers, as is the Witch Elf. So tags that guy. That is a Chameleon Skink and an Assassin right in place there. So the Chameleon Skink suffers only having movement 7. So the shadowing on the Assassin has more of a chance. It's going to have to take the reroll here for the dodge. Ah, oh, that's unlucky. Oh, uh, well, Prehensile Tail's made it a uh, 3 oh, plus. Prehensile Tail doing some work. That's something to watch out for. We've got four Kroxagors. Uh, that's certainly... T I mean, there is a huge difference between a 2 plus and a 3 plus. And I don't mean... You know, statistically, just like metaphysically, uh, three plus and two plus are just very different feelings. Um, one is you never take a three plus unless you have to, and the other one is a two plus, and you just take them freely. It's funny, and that that uh, prehensile tail will make all the difference on those rolls. But that does. Yeah, I've been seeing that with uh, the underworld team I'm running. Uh, I got a goblin with two heads. Yeah. And goblins normally it's like uh, they're stunty. You can dodge them, but only if you need to. Yeah. And with the two heads, it's just like. <laughs> Six tackle zones? Yeah, whatever. It's so good. That's that's why how I feel about the uh, the Snotlings. Right, okay, we get a Blitz here from the Bloxagore, and he stuns with a natural pow one of the Bludging Blitzers. Now, I don't feel like that's going to be a great running lane up the middle there, but he's still got movement left on the Crocs. Oh, going to oh, tag. Tag some of three players. That is right. huge. And like we said, Prehensile Tail is going to keep those guys... Um, from freely rolling dice. Yeah, they could. It'd be a lot of manpower to oh. devote to blocking a single Croxagore, but get, oh, bonehead. Get a bonehead there. <laughs> he does have to be careful that stab can work against big guys. It can. But if they want to move the assassin. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't I think... think we'll be seeing many stabs but against the big guys, but we might. I think Gothmog is probably a better player than that, whereas when I was running the Assassins, it was just, oh, I'll try stabbing this tree a couple of times. Uh, because, you know, it might work. Right, so two Crocs just tying that uh, elf lineup. The interesting thing is that top elf is the tackle one, so it doesn't get the dodge reroll. So he's in the best striking position, uh, but he ha doesn't have the free dice. So actually, those two big blocks in the middle has opened up a bigger running lane than I thought. Mm. They, they can they really form a solid cage through that? I feel How like it's going to be up the top between these Croxagors. Um, yeah. Probably counting the I movement mean, here of the red crested skink. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He can form uh, a cage with the red crested skink angel in the top half of it um, if he wants. I, yeah. I don't think um, they're going to be able to get a decent block on either of those Croxagors now. Uh, yeah, and we're going to see the Red Crested Skinks now move up to anchor oh, that cage. staying in the middle there, not moving behind the Croxagors, okay. Mm, well, I guess the thing is, it's going to cost, um, because like we said, the Elves are slower, significantly slower than the Skink team here. <laughs> they're, actually, they're, they're not in a bad spot. He needs to go for it there, surely, otherwise he's going to end up with a, a corner blitz. It doesn't even matter. you go. Goes for it, gets it. I was going to say, that's just living very dangerously and not even Austin Powers would make that move. Um, uh, this poor guy in the backfield, even with movement 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, he is a long way out. Okay, we've got a dodge here. It's the Chameleon Skink and Shadowing succeeds. And then he trips while dodging and goes down. So, can you believe it? Shadowing not only worked... But forced a forced a dodge roll to fail, leaving that. So, so how does how does shadow work? I know it's um, something to do with movement. I'm going to be honest with you, Matt. No one knows. Um, it's a mystery. <laughs> so I've got it up here, but it just doesn't seem yeah. to make sense. Uh, your opponent. So if you move away from someone with shadowing, the shadowing player get uh, no the moving away player gets to roll two d six, add their movement, take away the shadowing player's movement, and if it is a if it's greater than a seven. Um, they're fine. If it's, le if it's uh, less than a 7, if it's a 7 or less, then they get a free follow-up on you. Right. 
so against the skinks, I wasn't expecting it to see to do much, but that was a chameleon skink. So having so one less movement, less movement. Yeah, so it should have been successful. Uh, okay, big block here. Skull with a reroll into a pow. So goes for the one die on the Kroxagor from the Bludging Blitzer. That is going to free a Blitz up top from Mr. Tackle. And that could be the end of Angel Ged. Um, that's an unfortunate positioning, I think, there for the block. That's probably going to cost that Blitzer one square of movement. It could also be a one die block against the Bull Carrier with a Rob in chat wants me to roll 2d6 Rob we've got two dice here two dice these are the roster rumble dice we get naturally a six and a one I'm not sure what Rob's up to but I like it uh, two die block here pound skull and... yeah we could get a one die block from the tackle one if they if they move around and they move it'd be one dodge into that Croxigore's tackle zone and then they could get a one die block on the uh, ball carrier. Uh, that would be a two die block, wouldn't it? Strength three against strength two. Uh, oh yeah, the crossbow can't provide assist. Yeah, mm. he's tagged. It's so a blitz. A two die block. It's a blitz from tackle. He gets in and fails. Oh. He goes down and has been stunned. That's huge. That is huge. Uh, oh, Rob says MVP for my forfeited games. There you go. Uh, okay, so. That could have been absolute disaster for the Skink team. Now they've got some reasonable options. However, two Croxicles down. That's really good work there by the Dark Elves. They can get into the end zone with one go for it just now, but they can also try and get that Witch Elf out of the way and do it with no go for it. I think the go for it would be the safer move. Hey, they can just run it in. Can they? Yeah. No dodges. No, one, just, two, well, yeah, well, there's, there's four, one, five, one, six, one dodge. Seven, eight, okay. If he goes through the square where Angel Ged is now, uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, straight in, because this guy's movement eight. Oh, he's got leader. Yeah, I was thinking uh, around the, the oh, downed guy. Backwards. Nah, just needs With to move Ged out no the way. Dodges. But like, like yeah. you said, it is a. Um... Oh, he's going to go for the Dauntless. <laughs> And he gets it. Look at that. One dice. Power doesn't push. knock him over. No, like doesn't the, uh, doesn't need to. Just needs to clear a path. Away, yeah. There's the path. Does he corner hang or does he go in straight for the touchdown? It's straight the for touchdown. the touchdown for Widrum. We've got animations just for this moment. It's a touchdown for the Lizards there. Oh, man. So, we talked about it before kickoff. Oh, this a cinematic on the string. Wow. <laughs> Uh, what can I say? I had a busy day at work today. Um, yeah, so early score there for the Skinks. I don't think any long-term damage for either of them. One Skink out, but still yeah, has... Skink stays out, but still 11 players afield either side. Okay, so the tactic here that we've seen from Gothmog and that works really effectively for Dark Elves is a screen, one way or the other. It's, it's like a side cage. But yeah. with five or six players. So you can go for a side cage or a launch pad where you run halfway up the pitch on the left hand, or, you know, on one of the sidelines and just ball carrier plus two. What we've seen from Gothmog is he goes three or four squares deep and side cage with uh, with five or six players and just screens off uh, the play. It's really interesting. He almost builds a tunnel ahead of the ball carrier um, and it puts the defense in a position there where they either have to go through two layers to get the ball carrier who's closer to midfield or try and block through the tunnel at which point Gothmog can then change direction it's a it's a really effective um technique teddy rj two more d6 uh it's a two and a three uh earnings i think yeah <laughs> okay so Setting up. Okay, keeping that block, Sigour, I imagine. Oh, the guard guy in the backfield. That's... Um, that's actually a really clever thing because that guard, paired with Dauntless, uh, can give him some pretty... Oh, yeah. you can just move him wherever the Dark Elves go and then the yeah. Dauntless, put, uh, Dauntless Blitz. Yeah. Exactly, and you cannot fail a Dauntless Blitz. Well, you, you can obviously fail and skull the heck out, but uh, that means you don't have to use the Blitz or lose the Blitz on Bonehead. That's why Ogres are so good with Guard on a human team um, because I'm a big fan of big guy Blitzes, but it just yeah. it does... You just don't activate <laughs> yeah. him and then... 
yeah. uh, a blitz with the well, well blitz, you, yeah. you you can activate them but if they fail you don't lose your blitz you just lose the ability to position a guard piece it, it's it's a far better choice but it's just way does, less fun does guard still work when they when they've boneheaded no if he's boneheaded he's out for the turn but it right it yeah kind of it's it's kind of goes from a all-in with the big guy to okay let's see if the big guy can get me the bonus on my automatic blitz yeah it's it's a much better yeah. play i did think he'd leave the blocks of gore in the back but actually that's a smart move because there's no way that Gothmog is going to get profitable blocks very easily on these croxagors on the line so gone dauntless is pretty likely to work against a strength three i think it's piece, three isn't it? plus isn't it um well it's it's d6 plus two and you have to get greater it's, than their strength it's two plus then isn't I, it because um, they've got to roll a two and then plus the strength of two to get the uh the four ace and, ace and one in chat said wild animal guard stays up when failed though that is very true actually. yeah um unfortunately matt as you found out having a really stupid player like the troll on the underworld <laughs> they don't do so good <laughs> No, no, they don't. Uh, I think I'm going to give him tentacles and then never move him again. I think that's just a great the of the field and just like <laughs> a great option. Tentacles, then disturbing presence, and just just turn him into a beast of Nurgle, supported by a whole <laughs> bunch of two-headed goblins. It's just a crazy team. All right, so heavy on the line here from the Dark Elves with two, an assassin and a just alignment. Oh no, blitz. it's blitz time. So, um, oh, that. Because of the positioning, I don't think Widrim's going to be able to make a huge... But, oh, it's Steve Meyer. Steve Meyer, how are you doing? Welcome to the chat. Uh... Double on the Yeti from uh, the Elga the Kingdom team. Oh, I hate that Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you go for? You've got to go for Block, surely. Block Claw is better than Claw Mighty Blow. Um, yeah. It would just make, it's just going to make him way more efficient, unfortunately. Especially with friends, eh? Yeah. Um, although that's that said, if you're playing in a high stunty environment, then tackle on a big guy is just horrific, especially with that guy. He's got frenzy, right? So deep kick here and a really good move here. Gets the oh, skull, skull both down. Both down. That was with the, the guard oh, one. It is yeah. Guard. Does re-roll it into a pow pow push and so drops the assassin down. I begin to see mighty flow here. Knock out the assassin. That is a big bit of removal. Now we've got two Croxagor, all four Croxagors on that main line. That is a load of prehensile tail. And we're going to see another skink probably flank around the right hand side here. This is an aggressive, aggressive opening. No, just the one guy. So we're going to see one skink in the backfield versus alignment and an assassin. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Steve in chat says, sitting in a closet at work where the internet is strong. <laughs> hey, Steve, I love that. Got to go where the blood bowl is. Um, you've you've missed a you've missed an exciting few turns. Um, the skinks pulled it out the bag. They went down. They got the score. We saw some great counterplay by the dark elves managing to drop two croxagors down, but the skinks skinked their way using Dauntless on the Red Crested Skinks, which I think is the only way Widrum's going to be happy scoring. Um, and now we're seeing a Blitz here. That Leader Skink isn't in a great position. Oh no, it's the Leader Skink who's gone down the pitch. He's not He's not too bad, because he's... I mean, he can get taken down. Uh, he's threatening, isn't he? He's threatening the ball. Uh, I yeah, they've got, I think they've got to use their Blitz on that, or at least mark him up. There's the mark. That's with the assassin. Yeah. yeah, I do. I armor seven is is fun to stab, but it is not a certainty. Now frenzy stab, I'm all over that. Run in there, take the two die block. If that doesn't work, then try the eight plus. Oh, it's a big blitz here. Gets a natural power from the witch elf. You're exactly right. Exactly right, Matt. Does use the blitz on that skink and only prone though. Skinks have got a lot of movement. Um, Steve, the, those Dauntless Skinks are pretty useful. They are. They are really good. I need to... Uh, I, I just need to find a bunch of Croxagore models. <laughs> uh, Matt, I don't know if you saw, I, I painted up a big ethereal in honour of your team. I didn't see that. I'll have to post that into the chat. Yeah, big air elemental. Um, sorry, not ethereal, air elemental. Um, I'm trying to find some, some little guys, but well, it's difficult. Are they Games Workshop ones or are they like... No, it's just a big guy. Right, so go for it here. Fails. 
uh, and drops that blitzer down. It's the dodge blitzer. Uh, but so the ball is open so let's just do the maths here with the skink one two three four five six seven eight that skink with two dodges can be on that ball <laughs> yes Steve, when games workshop gets on that with the croxigal um, the problem is with the big guys is they say they tend to be very very well posed very action poses so having four of them is going to be tricky um, might need to have a look around that uh, mighty blow block Yeti on that ogre team. That is a horrible player. I'm glad the game, I'm glad the season's over for that team. <laughs> okay, gets a pow here, big block, and stuns the lineman. Strong arm fire belly. Uh, uh, Rob has loved loved his his uh, bomb teams this season. Okay, big blitz here from the Croxigal with guard. It's just a push. And that was the not, tackle guy. Not perfect, but it, it's it's. Oh, that wasn't even the Croxigore, Sorry, that was naturally. Oh, no, that was the Dauntless guy. This threw us off last match because <laughs> <laughs> we're like, it's a big two die block. It must be from a Croxigore. No, it's the little guy with the hat. I think this could. Um, the, the the dark elves aren't in a great position here. Um, yeah, Goff Mogs, uh, the advantage is slightly swag in, in favour of the Skinks. That Blitz, um, as in the Blitz roll, uh, certainly yeah. gave him an edge here. Because even if the Skinks can only stop him from scoring, um, it's going to be an interesting second half. Okay, so, Chameleon Skinks... So what, what happens if they draw? Uh... Uh, if they draw, then uh, the Dark Elves win. So the Dark Elves are playing here for a draw. The Dark Elves win the tournament if they, they... do. They do. So it's going to be uh, a win here for Widrum to win the tournament or a draw here for Gothmog. Uh, oh, Steve. He said, played versus Horrors the other day with Squigs. Most effective bombing plays I have ever seen. Half my team was blown up by half. Oh. <laughs> do the Horrors have a bombardier? Oh, dude. The Horrors are all bombardiers. They've got two big guys that are bombardiers and two medium oh, guys. Oh, it's just horrific. Yeah. Uh, that's what I played against with the, with the Snotlings. Steve, that sounds like an amazing Stunty League game. I love it so much. Uh, right, okay, back to the game, though. We had a failed dodge here from Peyton. So the uh, the that leader skink... The... Oh, that's the leader skink. Yeah, he had a play on the ball. Uh, now Was he just be... going for the, for another touchdown there? Uh, I, I think... I think probably, uh, but the Dark Elves that have seen to that, so capitalising yeah. on that failed dodge and building this cage immediately down here on the left-hand side. That uh, is a that's a large blitzer with the ball, which is going to be hard to knock down. That is uh, going to be really difficult there. Uh, so do you think we're going to see a frenzy blitz here against the Chameleon Skink, possibly from the Witch Elf? There we go. Oh, yeah. Push back, push back. It's okay when you've got frenzy because she gets to line up another pair and she's got blocks. The Chameleon Skink does not. And the Chameleon Skink is out. Yeah, badly hurt. So that guy's out for the game. Probably won't see Widrum burn the Apothecary on this guy just yet. Yeah, probably not. I think uh, in case a, um, a Croxagore gets fouled later on. Or something like that. Or just no, even. No, he does. He goes for the Apothecary. Um, back into reserves. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Uh, yeah, Rob says 3D print the Croxigors. That's actually not a terrible idea, Rob, at all. I might have to tag uh, Ben in that. My Mr. Blood type getting whooped in and getting to work. Okay, so dodge away here with the lineman. Look at that. We've gone from a disaster here from the Dark Elves in turn three to a... Shadowing fails there. And yeah. a cage has been formed. Solid cage there. Uh... Where's Angel Ged? He is this little skink on the side here, but there's there's bad blitzes there. Uh, oh, knocked out another skink. Another normal skink. Yeah. Um, yeah, Steve says, I thought he would have kept his um, apothecaries for the red-crested skinks. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of chameleon skinks. They're okay, but the elves aren't likely to do much passing, and shadowing is... Yeah, it's it's okay. When you when you're playing strength two against strength three, it's much more likely to just get punched in the face. So Dark Elves formed a cage and tackle Blitzer 
just tanking point in front of that cage. So, okay, it's get your crocs out, turn five. We are halfway through the first half now. Uh, still got four crocsigors standing up. There's a couple of big blocks coming here. There's the first one. Power both down. He's dropped. That frees up uh, a crocsigor there. Probably follow up. Probably mighty blow. And a stun. Done. Hmm. So, it's interesting. It looks like the Dark Elves are playing down numbers here on the left-hand side. But we've got two players at the top. And yeah. Dark Elf linemen really aren't that bad. Movement six. Edge four. I would take down any other non-elf team, like, merrily. Um, <laughs> so so it, the Dark Elves are never far from a stretch play. And quite frankly, if this guy at the top gets free with the ball, it's going to be real tough for the Lizards to defend. Uh, Steve, when you can just get blitzed off and they can roll away, shadowing isn't the end or no. No, it might just be trying to make sure he keeps his numbers on the pitch as much as, as, much as he can. But um, Widrum here is out of re-rolls as well. So he's... Naked dice now, this half. And Crox1 starts a move. Hesitation. Tags the tackle guy in place. That's clever play there by Widrum. Um, tagging the dodge elf, is the dodge blitzers, is a lot less effective than that tackle guy. Because that tackle guy is going to threaten to burn a reroll for the team. And uh, while Widrum is out of rerolls, Gothmog, the dark elf coach, is down to his last one. And he's still got four turns and a lot of work to do. Uh, yeah, the um, I'm, I'm not sure if the the skinks are going to be able to break this cage, but I'm also not sure that this cage is going to be able to get through the skinks and get down. Uh, I think it looks like it might just uh, Widrum might just be playing a redeployment game of um, just trying to bring those crocs scores over to that cage because you're quite right if the crocs get on it we're gonna see a blitz here it's dauntless blitz he jumps in can he get it he does it's just a push i mean there's no re-rolls it's just there's a push no re-rolls. it's just a push oh fantastic uh is he gonna follow up into the death cage if he does um, that assassin's gonna get a free block on him neil and chats asked um about the predictions for um this game before it started um i didn't put it in favor of anyone i thought the teams were very very balanced uh for this, this one uh then i think you said uh, the dark elves edged them out just a I little did. bit i thought the skinks were going to be uh underdogs here um it's funny we could see uh gothmog not win this game and still win the tournament um Oh, this is good. Right, so doesn't follow up there with Angel Ged. We did say he'd do a lot of work. He was hoping for a both down result there to get the wrestle on the go. Uh, now it's likely that he dies now at the hands of a Witch Elf. Lockdown Brawlers, turn five. It's an open yeah, block. right away. There you go. Powers him down. How's the armor looking? Oh, shadowing. <laughs> Uh, he goes down. His armor's good. His armor's good. Angel Ged is going to be up in a moment. Uh, Neil, yes, will still top the table in the draw. Yes, yes, he will. He is seven points now. Draw will take him to eight, and nobody can touch him at that point. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but if Widrum wins, he goes to seven points as well. And thanks to having a really solid season, and in no small order, playing my Snotlings in the first round uh, has about a million tiebreaker points. So... <laughs> <laughs> he will win if he wins he wins and if Gothmog wins or draws he wins the tournament I'm so excited that we actually get to play out one final match for the winner yeah this is um, this is brilliant it, 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 it's, it's quite like dramatic isn't it it's quite like like it's been written this way because uh, we've got this this don't, last don't really start cool the conspiracy match. theories <laughs> Runs, uh, set us all up. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't put it past him. He's a pretty good TO. Okay, so we've seen the removal there. Uh, the coach here going into the tank a bit, into the think tank. What a day for Blood Bowl, says Neil. Absolutely bang on the money there, sir. Uh, okay, it's a dodge away with a dodge blitzer. Successful dodge. Escapes. We're going to see shadowing here from the chameleon skate. Surely at this point, Widrum's just got to take it because it's free. It's going to force that Dark Elf to keep taking those it dodges. It is going to put that Chameleon Skink in the middle of three Dark Elves. 
Yeah. Yeah. It, it, but it'll, it'll take the ball carry, so I say that's worth it. it definitely is worth it. Uh, but he escapes. There you go. He gets yeah. a nine. Uh, Stephen Chat, exciting for sure. Love the tournament. Loads of amazing content everywhere. It's been a great event with a bunch of great coaches, and I'm hoping that what comes after will be uh, similar. Uh, right, Dark Elves forming up. Another cage in the middle. Um, and Neil as well. It's been a blast, especially with so many draws at the top. Yes, it's been. Um, it, it, there was a bit of a runaway first half of the season, and then everybody caught up, and it settled down. And I thought, I thought Matt was going to do way better with his elementals. <laughs> they were one of my top picks of the teams in, in, in the event. Uh, I, I yeah, love... they'd probably they'd probably be really good in like a good coach's hands. <laughs> look at this! Look at this guy shadowing, just going to town here. Still following him, <laughs> uh, and making him roll those dodges repeatedly. Steve, I am so glad <laughs> to find Fumble running so good. And this guy is oh just God. clinging to him. Again, making me eat my words. Uh, but gets... Oh, that is that is interesting. So didn't manage to follow the ball carrier. But free. Free tag on the side of the cage there. Uh, gets the 3 plus dodge. It's a blitz. Skull pushback. So just pushes this guy away. Oh, and he's going to sidestep. <laughs> Onto He's going to tag the up the ball carrier. carrier. Now, I would not. <laughs> oh my that is brilliant. Now, we've got to watch this skink at the top here. One, two, three. Yeah. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So, with a dodge and a go for it, this skink at the top does get a one dice on the ball carrier. Yeah. Okay. And another dodge and does Wait, get is away. That, is that a one dice or is that a. Oh, two dice, yeah. Too nice, uh, Dark Elf Fairbairn, yeah. Yeah, it's not even a Red Crested Skink. All right, watch this Blitzer in the top. Blitzer number one. Uh, there will be a stretch play next time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares away from the end zone, but also uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares. Eight squares away from the ball carry, but seven squares away from this lineman. So Widrum, whatever he does here, is going to have to make sure that this uh, lineman to the, the to the top of the ball carrier is tagged um otherwise there yeah. is a, a free stretch play there so i wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see the red crested skink in the backfield move up and tag the blitzer um and then jeffrey skink number eight uh to swing around there uh and either make a play on the ball or just tag the ball carrier nathan in chat says this is going to be a half time show uh if <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. Don't know, don't know how many graphics Ben's prepared. Uh, I haven't I haven't gone that far. Um I just I, Shakira's gonna pop along uh, if we get a few moments then yeah. <laughs> okay, gone for the, the plane skink to tag the blitzer. Uh, maybe a blitz yeah. here from the crocs in the middle. Uh, it's not the blocks of gore. Not is the, it not the no skills on that one. Uh, but it is time now for get your crocs out, turn six. What is he? What is the next move? Uh, Gribble up a pie, seal enough, leaves the game. It's a blitz here. Who is blitzing? It's guard. It's the oh, oh, bonehead robs him of the blitz move. Um, you know what, Matt? I think I think the advantage is swung back towards the dark elves here. Yeah, maybe. Um. There's something I've just realised that uh, earlier when we were saying uh, why have they used the apothecary on the chameleon skink? They've got two apothecaries. I completely forgot. Yeah, 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 yeah. They bought the second. They Widrum bought the second one, but still, yeah. uh, I, actually, I think we've seen we've seen shadowing throw some uh, some fun in there. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was just a numbers thing now because. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Bonehead <laughs> again. Oh, Bonehead has hurt Widrum in this tournament so far. Let's see the rest of them do the exact same thing. That would be a wipeout here. Um, but we're seeing some good play tagging that player before anything else. Yeah, <laughs> Nuffle in chat. Ouch, in chat. Yeah, it's a tough one. When you play with big guys, you've got to be prepared for them to fail. Oh, my God. oh Matt called it. <laughs> oh, Matt called it. That's all three out. We're going to give him an R in chat for that one. For the triple bonehead, that is huge. That is huge. That just opens up the entire field. And now, uh, the only Croxigore left is tagged in place. Thanks, guys. 
so hopefully we'll see a bit of murder here in the midfield from this Croxigal. But with the blitz gone, it's not going to help. Um, it's not going to help the movement. Uh, right. So Angel Ged, the wrestle guy. Oh, gets shadowed himself by the assassin. Going to have to roll again to get away. Uh, and does so. So, Angel Ged, the Red Crested Skink, how much movement has he got left? He's down to three squares, so one, two, three. He can throw him in the mix, but all that's going to do is give uh, give Gothbog... Oh, he goes for it and fails the dodge. Uh, he's stunty and ignores tackle zones, but tackle zones don't matter when you're agility three. Did that other Croxigore activate? He didn't, so at least he's tagging those two Dark Elves midfield. Yeah. But what we could see here is it, it's a stab or a block. It's a stab straight. Blake's his armor, and that is the leader guy Stop. stunned. Um, and a big block here. Push. Pow. Drops the Chameleon Skink, even though he does have sidestep. Drops him to the ground. If his armor holds... He keeps the pressure up, but the armor is broken and knocked he is out. knocked out. Numbers so. are swaying towards the Dark Elves now. They, if, and they those, don't have a keg either. They don't. And that, that Crocs, all those Croxigors failing has left them in place. And they are not the fastest. Now, they're, they're not bad for big guys by a long shot. But the pressure here for Goffmonk to take a risky stretch play is now gone. Um, he's got one, two, three or mobile dark elves he could easily put a screen up to the north here if he wanted to rather than go <laughs> which room says i hate the bonehead sound of this game i'm gonna have be having nightmares about that tonight um, i think so uh yeah but the, the pressure there to take that risky stretch play is now gone so he can just move up it's only turn six he's got three turns total including this and that that's 18 squares He's only got 17 to walk with this Blitzer. All right, so part... If you were playing Lizards or, or this team, or any team with Croxigals, really, yeah. uh, and you rolled a, a 10 on the level up on a Croxigal, would you give it the plus movement? Not until you've got Break Tackle. Um, not until you've right. got Break Tackle, I think. Break Tackle just keeps them manoeuvrable. Um, movement yeah. 7 is pointless on a big guy if you can just tag him with a zombie, as, as you, I believe, like doing that. Yeah, but I'm not used to movement six or seven big guys. Uh, I, I definitely would be putting more zombies on them if they were that much. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think movement six break tackle is better than movement seven without break tackle. Yeah, oh, probably. Free two die block here Ooh. powers this guy down. Poor Jeffrey <clears throat> takes it in the face. His armor holds, just prone. But yeah, and like then a, a pretty effective side cage there. Uh, well, side ish cage. Dude, uh, there's nothing that can get to that ball going. Uh, that. All right. There's always red the red crest skink, skink. Uh, but he's going to have to take a billion dodges. Um, Even more now. Nah, you, you've you've got it there, man. That is a there's a very solid defensible position. Disengages there with the blitzer. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Is Goffmog is really good at creating multiple layers of a defense. Now it looks like these players are scattered, but all the lines of attack. That is a screen, here, isn't it? He's got two layered screens, man. Shields are up. That is excellent play there. There is a long way round at the top. And this skink, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, can go around, but it's not worth it. And tags him oh, instead thanks. with a blitzer. Probably not a bad move. Now, that, that chameleon skink, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dodge, 6, 7, 8, oh, is no, now my... blocked right in place by that lineman. Absolutely bang on the money there. And then a dodge with this lineman, maybe? Oh, he's got to try it. Two plus, uh, three plus to get away from a Croxagore is significantly better than being blocked. That was a, that was a, a foul attempt there. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, it, it switched to him in action. Right. Oh, okay, I was going to say, it brought the bribe there, I think, to, to take, take advantage of the dirty player. Where is that dirty player? He uh, is to the left of the corner. He's up in the, yeah, yeah. In the cage. Um, that is, yeah, that is that is exactly the kind of side screen that could come out of nowhere with Dark Elves. And now all that Widrum is left with, there's no blitz on the ball carrier. He just has to try and manoeuvre these bonehead players to 
to threaten. And he's got a couple of Dark Elves there that are in with stretch play distance. Yeah, and even even if even if that can't be done, um, and if these two are tagged up, they can just move the ball carrier into an already ready-made side cage there. Yeah, yeah, he creates a tunnel uh, along the side. Yeah, uh, but some not... better bonehead rolls this game. Yeah, uh, this round. <laughs> yeah, it felt like they all hit yeah. in one turn. Um, I just. I think we're going to see a Red Crested Skink blitz the Blodging guy at the very front, the Blitzer, to try and shut the edge of this tunnel. Um, but, I don't know, wouldn't be terrible to blitz with the Croxagore in the middle and then run in and apply pressure to as many players as possible, but that ball carrier is getting away with it. Blitz, which, which blitz the, the the one with the um, that's tagged by the lineman, like blitz the lineman out of the way. Uh, or... Yeah, this one here is just going for a block. push back both down. Goes for the pushback because it's not yeah. blocks ago. Is he going to follow? I... Uh, I, I don't think he will. Yeah. No, I think. And then maybe a, mm, maybe a blitz on this witch elf. It's a move. Just positioning. Oh, go it's the go for it. That was risky, but it does tag those two players in place. Now we've not seen the blitz yet. I would not be surprised if it wasn't red quested against that uh, blitzer at the top. There he goes, blitz time. <laughs> In does he get? He does, and powers him down to the ground. Takes out the bludger. Can we see armor now? He does. Yes. So Red crested skinks absolutely doing the work here. He's still got two squares of movement. I wouldn't. I'm. Um, he's going to be popping him right in the way. Yeah. No possibility for stretch play anymore, as far as I can see. No. No. Um, no, this is uh, especially this, with the free hands tail though. Yeah, this now does force both these. Basically, before um, Goffmog had three turns to score with, and they, they basically had a two-turn play there. It's several two-turn plays in and three yeah. turns in which to pull them off. Now he's got a two. He's got a two-turn play, and literally just the two turns he needs to. He's going to be hard pressed. Turn seven. Skink's really putting the pressure on here. I know. Uh, who, whoever thought that would be a sentence? Um, okay. It's a position to take care of that Croxigore. That lineman is going to Blood Bowl Heaven. Um, and interesting and really good move by uh, Widrum not to stand up the skink on the ground next to the assassin. Uh, I don't know if that was on purpose or whether his armor was broken, but standing that guy up next to the assassin would have just got him murdered again yeah um, right so we do have a blitzer in the midfield but he is a billion squares away so it's gonna have to be some kind of action either this blitzer just runs his way in um because quite frankly blitzing with a blitzer especially one with blodge it, it, it's quite fine when your opponent is strength two here we go blitz two dice push push gonna drop him south and not follow up probably are you thinking about the reroll? That would be interesting. Uh, Surely the push. I've heard is... you say a few times, "Never re-roll a push." <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, it's an age-old saying. It's the eleventh commandment. <laughs> really thinking about it. Yeah, still got one. Uh, push. There you go. Not going to be following up, I don't think. Yeah, he's now one, two, three, four, five, six squares, and he's got oh. seven movement. Oh, followed up. That's got to be a misclick. Oh, that would have Lucky been they didn't massive. Re -roll. Absolutely massive. That would have been a complete game ender there. Uh, right, so there is still Blitz's. Uh, Blitzer has legs with go for it to switch to bottom. Risky, but it's there. Well pointed out, Stephen. But yeah, he's, he's managed to punch a hole there. Take Making yeah. the most of 120k's worth of player. I just, I would bet, I would bet anything that we are going to see a red crested skink blitz on the ball carrier. I just, I just can't see Widrum passing up the opportunity. <laughs> Rob, Rob's in, not always Rob, real. Advice. Just giving terrible advice there, Rob. <laughs> hey, Grubnuts, welcome to the party. How you doing? It's been an interesting first half. The skinks uh, went down, scored on turn three, um, really put some hurt into the dark elves. Blitz almost had them turn over the ball. But the Dark Elves have done a heck of a drive 
to swing it back around and if they go into the second half receiving on an equal footing it's it's uh, well all the dark elves need to do is draw and they win the tournament all right yeah uh we're seeing the crocs goals get tagged up uh i don't, I don't think there's gonna be a crocs oh, blitz there anyway he drops down failing that due to prehensile tail yeah everybody's that a, favorite that's a very skill. open ball carrier um most people are tagged up anyway yeah so there's gonna i mean there's gonna have to be either a dodge or a one die block um skink blitz has to be it uh, it's Crocs gonna be... be nice but it's the risk of losing the blitz again yeah i think i think you're right there steve yeah risk of losing the blitz plus you're gonna have to dodge away and dodging with a crocs is never a good idea it's a five plus was it adjuan yeah uh. that's 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 risky. When all he has to do is take a 3 plus with a reroll and then another 3 plus with a reroll, followed by a 3 plus for a 2 die block. Um, and he doesn't have to take this Dark Elf down. He just needs to pin him against the sideline and force uh, Gothmog to make the rolls with no rerolls. I, he cannot stop. If he drops the Blitzer, it's, it's, still, it's still not over. Certainly not with this Dark Elf team. But hey, it's, it's big plays. And Widrums are going to really have to consider. There we go. It's the first dodge, all the way round in front of the blitzer. Do you think? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then a three plus dodge blitz, possibly from the red crested skink. I think so. Does he do that before he tries anything with these croxigors? He does. This is tense. He gets the dodge. Here we go. In there. Can he get Dauntless? He does. It's both down. Skull. This guy has not got Wrestle. It's the other. Um, and no rerolls. So this is both down. He takes himself out. And now it's so going to be a two die blitz, blitz here for the goal. touchdown. Yeah, blitz that skink out of the way. And, uh... Oh, that was so close. Uh, so close. But I cannot say uh, Gothmog has played a superb recovery game here. Um, Going for a three die? Or... I, don't I don't know if he can. Not without taking at least one dodge now. Oh, no. He can go through the middle of these uh, Croxigals. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, five, three, six. Four. Not without a go for it. Uh, just takes it there. Pow push will give him the space he needs on a blitz action to push him out of the way and run in for the touchdown yeah. here. It's a touchdown for Gothmog. We have graphics. Uh, touchdown for Gothmog. Okay, so that will take us to the second half. I do not have a uh, halftime show prepared, um, but Matt is, uh, Matt's going to sing us a song. <laughs> uh, we got some recoveries on the... Um, Look at those recovery chaos, rolls. Four out of five uh, recovering. So basically, we're seeing 11 v 11. The only person that's out is a line skink. So we have got ourselves a match here. Uh, it's a brand new half, but this time the Dark Elves are receiving. So all Gothmog has to do is hold on to that ball for eight turns to make it to the championship, to make him the champion. Of and he's Gothmog. receiving. Yeah, exactly. Isn't it? All he's got yeah. to do is cage up real good. However, um, we almost saw Widrum take a steal when he was kicking. Then these guys, movement eight, movement eight is a yeah. huge amount of movement. And it's not like they don't have muscle on the line. Especially with a guard Croxagor. <laughs> and a Bloxagor as well. Uh, yeah. But good play from both, co from both coaches. Absolutely, yeah. Widrum using uh, that, that apothecary has come in handy. Uh, I We both scored it kind of thought on a chameleon skink, really. But actually, it's kept this second half with 11 players straight off the bat. Yeah, and we we saw we we saw that it we saw the apothecary used, and and we said a chameleon skink really they're not that good, and then a chameleon skink tailed someone and marked up the ball carrier <laughs> exactly with like and just four five or six. Now um, that, that was a turn eight touchdown. With any more luck for Widrum or any less luck for Gothmog, that would have been no touchdown at all. So both coaches really yeah. pushed. Uh, <laughs> Robin chat says the graphics are fantastic. If the TO was better, they would have been a halftime show. <laughs> And Widrum taking a two-minute tea break. Uh, I, I cannot support this enough. I've got my invisible well, that, cup that, of caffeine here. That gives <laughs> us a little bit of time to 
I guess. Do you want to do some more predictions now? Uh, what, what's your... I, I just... Guys in chat, what do you think? We're one all. What do you guys in chat think? Um, I, I, the advantage meter has, has got to be swinging towards the Dark Elves here, in my in my opinion. They've, they've got the time. They've got the ball. Um, I mean, sure, it doesn't take much for an upset, but the Dark Elves are in a position of real control here. They don't even need to score to win this, this, this the, tournament. The, the advantage meter has been a, a pendulum this entire game. It's oh. just been back and forth and back and forth uh, with every every time the dice are rolled. Absolutely. Uh, see if I can get a, uh, a graphic for that. Come on, there's got to be some kind of advantage meter. Disgraceful. Let's go for that. Uh, so, what do you think then, Matt? Do you think it's going to be the Skinks? All well, a, a turnover and a quick score for them. That's it. That's all they need. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the Dark Elves uh, because they're receiving now. They've managed to equalise, um, and there's there's no pressure on them. Uh, they don't have to score. They can, they can wait for a draw if they want. Um, so they can they can hang back, punch the skinks if they get near them, uh, run around the crocs scores. Uh, the pressure's all on the skinks to, hmm. to well to let's, make a big play. Let's let's re uh, let's reframe it ever so slightly. Given sure. that given that Gothmog only needs a draw, do you think the play style will adapt uh, to be one of a kind of hold on to the to the the lead as it is on aggregate? Or do you think he's going to go out for the touchdown? I mean, which do you think is more risky in this environment? I think that they don't want... The, I think going for the touchdown it is kind of the way that he will protect the ball in this one because um, against some teams, you can keep the ball a little bit in your backfield. Against Dwarves, like, what are they going to do? They, they pick up the ball, they've got another five turns until they can run to the end zone. Yeah. Um... But Skinks are moving eight. So if, if they've got it like even halfway through the um the Dark Elf side of the pitch, they're protecting the ball, a lucky blitz, Skink picks it up and runs into the end zone, immediate touchdown. The, right. That's pretty scary for the Dark Elves. I think they're gonna need to go for a touchdown or at least put it pretty far in the Skink end zone. Yeah. Uh it's it's a fantastic one. So what do the guys in chat say? Uh, Steve says, Dark Elves have the durability to pull this. They really do. Grubnut, Skinks, see, uh, totally OP, like Super Lizards. I want Widrim to take the win, but I don't know. Uh, Steve, I have to assume he knows and keep away will be the name of the game. But I, ju I just don't know if he's going to be able to pull off the keep away, you know. Um, it, it, because it does not take much. There we go. We've got the green arrow of advantage here. Oh, Widrim's... Uh, crashed. Looks like he's disconnected. He's left the game. This is just oh, playing up, playing up the suspense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, after yeah, keep away. I just don't know if he can put it off because those skinks they're stunty with dauntless. They're not even afraid of running in and taking blocks. There is going to be no safe space for these dark elves. They cannot protect themselves against a risky play. And uh, Widrum's got it all to win here, so I can see, I can see the, uh, I can see the red team just going all out here. Yeah, Steve's got it uh, kind yeah. of on the money in uh, uh, in chat there because uh, the, the Dark Elves they can they can make their little screen, and they don't have any runners, so they can't they can't they don't have the built-in dump off, but they yep. can they can make a pass if they need it. Um, but those chameleon skinks could uh, could make that a little bit risky to do. The as uh, as confident as I am that the dark elves have got the advantage at the moment, I don't know. I I would not be surprised if we didn't see one of those red crested skinks just come in and win the game here. All it takes <laughs> is one blitz uh, with wrestle, and that ball comes out. I do it with the gutter runners as often as I can, and this guy is a little gutter runner. High kick, so get a definitely advantage of dark elves here. And it is straight down the middle. He drops it. He drops the catch. So let's see if he gets the uh, the one out of the way already. Still got that bribe. 
yeah, I, he hasn't really had much of an opportunity to go for a foul. Um, oh, Steve, yeah, pass block on the Chameleon could be useful if the Dark Elves have to try and take any kind of stretch play. To get, yeah. To, if they if they play Piggy in the middle, they're going to be significantly disadvantaged. Pop that down there. It's a blitz straight off the back. Pushback skull not keeping the. Oh, is it tackle? It is tackle. Uh, oh, here we go. It's a two die block on the Croxagore. Both down. Pow gets the Ow. choice here. Uh, drops him. Armor's held. Starts a foul action. There it is. Dirty player yeah. coming in. Plus three for the foul. He That's is like casualtyed. He is out. This could That's be... That's got to be an apothecary. Uh, yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, apothecary... Are we seeing apothecary? Where is it? So he's fouled. Yes. Uh, it got used and the... Bribe. The bribe? Yeah. So... Uh, that is... So is that still a... Is that still a turnover at that point? I think it is. Uh, yes, I, I, I think so. And uh, we will probably you've got to you've got to assume they use the apothecary here. They did, yeah. They uh, the Crocs signal has gone into reserves. Oh, fantastic! Caught the source. Uh, okay. So I guess that bribe does not fall, that saves him from the turnover. Bribes are bribes are bribes are mighty. That's that's not how it works on BB2. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Lord knows. Right. Nuffle knows. Another big block here. Uh, uses the reroll to get the pushback uh, on that Crocs. Really going in to play dominate, to, to dominate that front line. And we're going to see the block on the another. Uh, that is a excellent opening series by the Dark Elves. Look at that. Yeah, Steve. You, you, you bang on the money. Um, okay, so we've turned from a really strong uh, lineup here to a very strong pocket created by that Dark Elf team. This is what Gothmog is superb at doing. And we're going to have to see Widrum. It doesn't even matter which side he lines up to now. Gothmog has the flexibility to shift that screen and that pocket to the other side. Yeah. Um, the... Losing a Croxagore, and even though, because I think now that Croxagore is going to be out for most, if not all, of the game, because uh, he would have to take a lot of pressure for Gothmog to uh, want to score. Well, that said, if he scores, yeah. um, it's going to force the uh, the Skinks to 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 score two touchdowns in a half. It is, yeah. However, this uh, this drive is not over yet. We've got got you get your Crocs out first turn of the second half. Um, just moves to threaten with the mighty strength two skinks here. This is uh, in the backfield. Croxagore stands up. up uh, all's good there. No bonehead fails. It just presents him for the next turn. Just keeps him active. Keeps him in the fight. Keeps him mobile. They, they've done quite good with the Croxagores here because only, unless they want to use a blitz, only one of them can really do anything meaningful uh yeah no I, now the one who is unattached is the bloxagore so he can rampage yeah. straight in somewhere and take a pretty good punch but he is just, just moving now hopefully uh, we yeah. both know why that is we know where the blitz is going to come from ah uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh i would be surprised if it wasn't another blitz from uh our little friend the red crested skink so I went into this tournament map playing Snotlings, who uh, by all accounts are probably just one of the worst teams. Um, but my goal was to score a touchdown with with a pump wagon. Okay, it took me four games and, you know... Oh, you did it in the last game? I did, yeah. I got away with it. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, I think he just rolled over the ball, picked it up and just drove into the end zone. It was amazing. Um, but that was my goal for the tournament to achieve. It feels like Widrum's goal is just to block with the red crested skinks as much as possible. And I, I, just, I don't blame him. Even if he doesn't win this, <laughs> he's yeah. he's won it for secret teams everywhere. Uh, I'd love to see just on on a team on fumble somewhere a red crested skink uh, that's like oh he gets it. Look know. at that. He runs in, gets dauntless, double powers that blood blitz out. No, it's the tackle guy drops him. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. He's, he's just going yeah. for it. That's so yeah. good. 
just uh, I'd love so to good. be on Thumble somewhere, just a red crested skink with however many star player points it is to be <laughs> max level, and just like he's got all of the skill, just an he's... absolute tank. But stay strength two, just just everything else. Yeah, edge five. <laughs> Uh, Edge five movement million. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's just a scoring death machine. Um, <laughs> right. So, Widrum here, he's rebuilt that front line with those Croxigors. That's some good positioning. Now he can afford to use his reserve skinks to kind of just apply pressure um, on on the the Dark Elf line. It almost looks like a re a reset. Hey, Snapsicle, how you doing? Welcome to the game. It's one all. It's the start of the second half. Uh, the red team needs a win. The blue team needs a draw. And my hand is randomly in the middle of the air. So I'm excited by the game there. Uh, it is a pow push. So Dodge is going to keep that guy up. But surely we're going to see the Crocs follow up into... Yeah, yeah. there we go. So was that the Just guard one that got taken out? Uh, it was no, it was a normal one. Oh, and not leveled up. Guards loitering down the bottom there. <clears throat> having, having guard in that situation surrounded by players would be huge. Okay, so ball carrier moves up. And we're going to see a couple of these ones who aren't marked up, I think, move back into a, into the front half of that cage. Uh, we're going to see a blitz, do you think, to get that skink out of the way? Because otherwise, probably. That's, there yeah. it is. Uh, both down, probably just going to drop that yeah. skink immediately. So she Moving jumps back in. Up, and then these, probably the, the blitzer and the lineman fall back into the cage. Uh, and then the assassin go somewhere else yeah yeah you're bang on the money there the assassin doing a shadow off the difference is that this guy has a knife um yeah which is um quite an advantage against these uh strength sevens uh, armor sevens strength seven and it's a be. knockout right there so Oof. that's a block pow and he is out Gets uh, gets out of the gets that uh, line went out the Croxigors tackles out without uh, taking a dodge as well. Oh, by blocking his way out, that's brilliant. Yeah, that is brilliant. Um, okay, so the the Dark Elves here, solid cage, solid pocket. Um, yeah, Grubnuts in chat, nice lizards getting thinned out a treat. They are indeed, but this still... is the meant to be an arrow on the screen now for the chat, by the way. Uh, there is an arrow Sorry. on the screen, and it represents the advantage meter, because we, I didn't prep that. Ah, uh, all right. <laughs> uh, okay, get your crocs out. Turn two. Oh, a double skull. <laughs> uh, mighty blow. That so, one dice block against a croxigor. Oh, he's done so well. It I was. mean, he's it, done so well against those croxigors that the strength just not really playing into it, but. Let's look at it now from the Dark Elf point of view. They've got a good pocket, but they've got two guys in base contact with Croxcore, and that's four of their players tied up there. Surely we're going to see a Crox block on an assassin because it's an easy target. Uh, where is the other assassin? Oh, yeah, he's right there. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Uh... And Widrum's going to have to, to hem this, uh, this left wing. But putting anyone on the assassin right now it can just go a different direction and gets the free stab. <laughs> Grumnut says, I need one of those foam hands for a mouse cut, sir, when on your stream. <laughs> I'm going to have to look into that, see if we can do that. Uh, okay, gets the push back, does take it on the assassin, and the assassin stays alive. Um... That's not bad. I mean, that does just put pressure on the corner of the cage. We're going to get another block. It's pushed back and both down. So just going to push him back and probably follow up. Yep, just keeping pressure on that. Now, we've got a skink up the top here. Uh, we've got two skinks. Now, as, as much as I'm loving seeing these red crested guys, that they're both out of range for a strike. They are. But this is not a bad... Uh, oh, it happens. Oh, oh bonehead. It happens. Which one? The, uh, the one out in the open. Oh, he re-rolls using leader. re -rolled using leader, okay. Yep. Um, I was going to say, it, it's not a bad way of kind of closing in on that drive. Yeah. Uh, uh, and again, we're seeing the, the lack of loner on this team just bumping it up a tier. Uh. <laughs> Rob, I'm up for that. Um, so the benefit here is that Croxagore tying those two players up. 
that means he doesn't have to put an armor eight player on the assassin, an armor seven player on the assassin. Chameleon yeah, skink that's... tagging that guy in place in the middle. Um, I think what, what, what do you think we're going to see this uh, this repressed skink at the top there? Oh, a blitz! <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's a blitz. On that, he's going to yeah, go. Oh, he just oh. goes straight through. He gets it. It's a skull. He's oh, already used the top. rear roll. Oh, that was an incredibly that was brave really move. Brave. That was... <laughs> hey, that's what I said. These skinks, they are not out. That three plus is a free dodge. Um, and, and Dauntless just needs to pull off once. One time. And this guy's got wrestle. There was a two plus chance, basically five out of six chance of that not being a bad block, and a four, a literally fifty percent chance that ball was coming out right then. Uh, it does not happen though. We get a reroll here from, the re -roll, eh? yeah. on double skulls, but drops that guy. That could be a costly reroll. But I mean, a failed stab against the Crocs there. Yeah, love to see a, a brave, a brave stab and another one. Another failed stab. <laughs> hey, sometimes you run tens. <laughs> as soon as the foam shops open. Oh no, no, I need to get a little foam. Uh... I need to get. I need to get the cursor to be a picture of the foam. Yeah, thingy. I, I think. Sure I, I think that. that is quite. Uh... I think you can do that. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's pretty apt as well. <laughs> need to get need to get Bonehead Podcast foam finger. Oh, geez. <laughs> need to get one of those made anyway. <laughs> uh, what a great tawny prize. Okay, so no stabs and are both down here. Okay, they've they've taken that crocs down and. It's a three die blitz here. Pow, push, 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 and uses tackle. That guy, you called it, Matt. Tackle doing a ton of work this game. Sidestep still now. Probably going to move to. Side oh, okay. Sometimes sidestep just get just means you get to choose where you die. Yeah. Uh, but look at this. Look at the space that's been created by this sequence. Um, there's narrier tackle zone in sight. Uh, there isn't really a great place for the ball carrier to move. Probably south. Into yeah, south two squares. And then uh, the lineman number nine, the dirty player guy, to move up in support. But it's only turn three. Gothmog has got the entire half to score and win and win the whole thing. So, yeah, it's uh, it's real good stuff here. One square. That's all he needs to get him safe. Oh, no. He gets fouled off. Angel is out for the game. That's the wrestle dauntless tiny red god that is it that is game over for widrum and then the <laughs> and uh, angel gets um just slaughter ends uh, after four games of just stupid blocks uh stomped uh stomped on by dark health now that just means that it's camden jane's time to shine he's still got one red crested skin, <laughs> the other red crested skin this guy yeah. doesn't have wrestle but it doesn't even matter so ball carrier does not have block so any blitz here are both down. Any any one die is a fifty percent chance of success. Now we see a failed dodge here from a lineman who goes down and ends up being stunned. Uh, uh, Rob, I think thanks, France. I'll tell that. Yeah. Yeah, Rob. I'm not entirely sure. Something blue and green. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure. With like hashtag BHPC or something. It's probably probably the way to go. Uh, Steve, I think that was the nail in the coffin. Quite possibly, that will be a pivotal moment. Now, we've we've already got the crudely drawn advantage meter in the direction of the dark elves here, <laughs> but that's um, that's doubling up a bit. See, they have an advantage meter on the uh, the magic, the gathering, like live coverage, um, and I've never I've never seen the point of it until now. And I'm like, this is this is this is what we need. So I need to get on that with the graphics. Um, right, so get your crocs out, turn three. Jeffrey stands up. This skink on the right hand side tags that witch elf in place. That's one tackle zone out. We can't I can't see a, a good crocs block here. Um yeah, the only crocs go block I can really see is this assassin and that and that's just kind of farming blocks. Uh, it is, it's not it is. it's not anything uh it's not pivotal. Game changing. It's a taste yeah. it's a tasty block though. Um It is, but some to do after the important stuff's done, I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Um, the only thing, there's a, there's an additional sequence we could see there. So the Crocs here has guard. So this skin yeah. could run in and take a two die blitz on the assassin, move up, and then that frees up the Crocs of to again move up. Um, or the Crocs could just blitz this assassin, take the two die block, and then reposition right in the way and get back into the thick of it. True, um, yeah. But that, but that just depends on whether Widron wants to pressure the ball carrier. It's both down pushback from the Crocs. Is he going to follow up? Surely he's got to follow up and just cause those additional um, dodges. It's tense. He's thinking about it. Uh, does Prehensile Tail stack? I feel like it does. It does. So surely following yeah. up here just absolutely kills these guys going anywhere. Prehensile Tail is a really good skill, especially when you're, when you're against a team like like elves because then you get two prehensile tails on them and it like it goes from that that three two plus to you've got a four plus oh that was a blitz with the crocs so using the blitz to maneuver away just with a different one uh, oh, oh. and that's the bloxagor as well that's that's interesting now while it looks it's like a move action there oh it's this uh, skink up the top yeah falling back makes sense so that Crocs going down south, I, it really just means that the top is just wide open here. That's worrying. It is, but I think if, if the Dark Elves have the turn to move up there, Get the, the Skinks also have the turn to move the defence You're upwards. exactly right, and Crocs movement 6 are just as fast as the Dark Elves. is a pow, yeah. the Crocs Gord drops the Assassin, and we're going to see Mighty Blow come into play. Oh, he's yeah, knocked KO. out. Uh, still got the Goth Apothecary Gary. for Gothmog. Not used. Fair enough. I think probably saving that for one of the other, the five top players on the team. The four Blitzers and the Witch Elf probably take precedent. Yeah. Right now, uh, Gothmog is winning the attrition battle three to one, uh, giving him an, a, giving him a ten to nine advantage. Now on pitch, I think it's even worse than that. Okay, uh, lockdown rulers turn four. Do you know what would be really insulting is if the assassin took out the Croxigal with a free stab there. Yeah, no, that would be uh <sighs> Yeah. Th that wouldn't be good for the uh Oh, it's a double pow. Thanks. Dropping the uh chameleon skink down. Do you know who would take that stab, Matt? Stevie uh, anyone else in the league? Stevie one two six. Our ethereal yeah, coach no, for this definitely. tournament. He would have taken yeah. that stab every turn. Um <laughs> I think he must have done about Probably about 16 or 17 stabs against my team. It's, it's, a lot. it's incredible. I played him at sevens uh, during the tournament. Just um, I Yeah, I saw. The, was it against dwarves? Yeah. yeah. It, his little stab guys were just running around murdering dwarves on natural rolls with nothing else. So I'm just <laughs> like, how is, this, how is he not won? <laughs> oh, cool. Congratulations, Widrum. Cheer there. There we go. Hey, we it. It's his 100th fumble game. Which is very cool. Now, back to the match. Um, um, it is uh, he 10 does. Dark Elf players versus 8 uh, Skink players oh, on the field huge. right now. Uh, goes for the stab on the Crocs, and the Crocs armor holds. Uh, a roll total of 6 wouldn't have really done anything to anybody except us, not Link. Poor effort, Assassin. This is why everyone takes Blitzers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, block here. It's going to be two dice wherever he goes. Takes the top, push back. Uh, this is dodge. Blitzer, yeah. Looks like what we're seeing is a press to the top. Um, if he can isolate the skinks down the south, it's just one Croxigor north. I wouldn't be surprised if these three players didn't just run up and redeploy in the top wide zone. Oh, Steven Chat says, happy 100, Widrum. Power push, push back. Oh, drops the Crocs. No armor, though. The I'm, armor 9's really paying off. I really feel like someone needs to remind everybody that these Croxigors are supposed to be strength 5. Yeah, a lot of them have been punched by elves, which... Uh... Look at that running lane. Absolutely breaking oh. free there. That is dominant. Here's the window, says Grubnuts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not even a stretch play. This could be a turn six, turn seven touchdown. But and that that is the nail in the coffin for the the skinks there because that 
yeah, two yeah. touchdowns in two turns. I don't think they can <clears throat> like actually do it, and if they can, it's so unlikely. Um, yeah, but hey, we've witnessed a Hail Mary pass from an ogre for a touchdown here in the last turn <laughs> at this tournament. Really? Oh, dude, did you not see that? I'll, I'll have to go back and watch the, the board. I assume uh, it was you versus yeah, Strob. It was. This um, round. It was in yeah. No, it was the last round. Round three, uh, right. Ogre Kingdoms oh, versus oh, yeah. Snotlings. Ogre, like, dodge, dodge, go for it, go for it. Hail Mary pass down the pitch. Scatters, gets caught, runs it in for a touchdown. Amazing play. <laughs> I love Hail Mary pass. It, it's so good. Uh, yeah, but with Ogres, it shouldn't be doing anything. That was fantastic. <laughs> it was just incredible. Uh, right, so we are seeing Get Your Crocs Out do turn four here. Bonehead successful and gets that crocs into the mix it's the guard guy um one two three four five six if he's willing to take a five plus dodge with this guy he could blitz away uh, but he's just gonna go for a oh fails the bonehead oh. i actually don't think he burns the reroll there i think that crocs is almost irrelevant as it is <laughs> yeah doesn't take the bonehead yes it's gonna yeah, that's not too bad i thought it was the one at the bottom there no uh... this guy austin one, two, three. He can go for a blitz. Uh, can't get to the ball carrier, but can go for a blitz. But it's a shame that guard one couldn't have ended up somewhere closer. But one, two, three, four, five. Blitz the bludger guy and end up on the ball carrier. Would be huge if he could put it off with the crocs. Um, but it is just as likely that he goes in for the blitz with the red crested skink. Although that, yeah, that crocs uh does have block. One, two, three, four, five. They can get they can get a one uh, a one die block with the. Ooh. It's a move. Yeah. Just chucks the Croxagore in the way as a roadblock. They, they can get a one die block with the red crested skink if Dauntless succeeds. You can always get a one die block with a red crested skink. That's why they're so good. <laughs> it's a blitz. Go oh, fails the dodge into the zone. Oh, oh, these red crested skinks. They're playing like gutter runners and they're failing like gutter runners. Oh, the Sun God is not happy with that guy. That that would have been that would have been a success with the gutter runner though, because it's uh it's the edge three on them. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 it, it doesn't matter when you you no. Uh, oh, oh, knocked out there. A KO against a chameleon skink. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, chameleon skink. Tackling Clayton out of the game. Oh, the Dark Elves are pulling it around here. Push back, push back. That one Dark Elf with tackle must have taken out nearly three three players by now. Okay, Bull Carrier is active. Going to swing south and just renegotiate the position on the pitch. Uh, this Bonehead Crocs in the centre. These two players here, he's got a, a, a cracking window to, to build a new cage. Going to move the assassin back up. What's the witch elf going to do? Is it just going to keep that guy down there? Three die block here. Pushback skull both down. Needed that three dice to that for that to not be a disaster. All right, now he has repositioned, but that crocs in the top, he's free. Blitz with the witch elf there. Oh, move. I was going to uh, say, who's, uh, she, who's, she, who's she blitzing? Um, that crocs is free to get on the ball carrier. I think hmm. a blitz with who now? Blitzer at the, top. at the top. Gonna run around and punch <laughs> a skink. Skull pushback. Pushback. That doesn't really that, help that him. No, that isn't great. Oh, well. I don't think they're gonna follow up there. One, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven. That blitzer is now God. in scoring range. Knocked out here. What? 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 Is that an assassin? That was a. Blitzer, Blodge Blitzer, uh, fails to the Blitzer. dodge away having, from the Crocs. Having to roll a 3 plus because of the prehensile tail, and he just rolls a 1 and a 2. Matt, we said it, there is a massive difference between a 2 and a 3. Uh, Rob in chat says, when I make one die blocks, you tell me off and stinks <laughs> to it, light shines out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I guess there's a, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it when dwarf coaches one die block either. It's a, everyone loves an underdog. Rob, you one die block with big guys. You're a crazy man. I love it. It's great. Makes games against you incredibly fun. <laughs> <laughs> Rob the Bombardier. 
I think is he he was a uh, friend of the podcast Rob now he was uh, Rob of Secret Carnage now he is Rob the Bombardier he's got his official tagline now uh, went bust says Woodrow and that was a, a big blitz right so it is get your crocs out it's the second half of the second half now it's the fourth quarter and the red team is active and has got a ton of choices none of them are great yeah, I mean, they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There, there are seven players on the field against nine players. That isn't great. Um, can't get a, can't out get a blitz on the ball carrier. Can get onto the ball carrier with a blitz from a big guy, which itself is risky. But to to say that Grublant says big guys where it's at might not be the pro plays, but it's what makes the game fun. I couldn't agree with you more. That's why oh, I yeah. like. That's why I like giants. Uh, okay, <laughs> bigger so, guys. Yeah, even the biggest guys. So that Crocs not taking the blitz means he has tagged the back half of the cage up here. Are we going to see a blitz from a Crocs, or is this just going to be a move to tag the top of the cage? Or the front of the cage, probably. Or does he There's just try and... This Crocs, yeah. Yeah, just moves in to tag that blitzer. Oh, it's a blitz from Camden. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Into the cage. Oh, come on. It gets the dodge. Can he get can he get it? Pow push. Is this guy This Takes guy is down. down. The ball is out, guys. Ball is out and in two tackle zones. There are no skinks on the ball, but that is massive. Uh oh, he's just going for it. This guy is going deep. Dodge two. Go for it. And probably one more to get the tackle zone on the ball. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, they've, they've gone this far. Trips while dodging. Team re-rolls for a six. Gets the dodge. Um, what's happening? He's contemplating that last dodge. He does yeah. it. He gets in there. That's a tackle zone on the ball. Uh, Grubnuts. If Darkos are going to score, the Skinks need him to do it pronto. Or else is not yet exactly right. I don't think that Lizard can hold, hold him off for the half. Uh, this... Uh, right. The only active player now is this Peyton guy. The leader Skink. He's yeah. got one, two, three dodges to get next to the ball. Four dodges to get onto the ball, and it's negative two tackle zones. It's all bad. The best thing, surely, for this guy to do is either to redeploy or to tag as many Dark Elves as possible. Because the Dark Elves can get the ball. They can get the ball. The only thing this guy could do is swing round south to tag the Witch Elf and the Blitzer in place. No. Going to play defense. Going to play safety. Yeah. That's no, right. I can see that. That's quite good. Because none of the Dark Elves are actually in scoring range, except this one up at the top, who's marked. Yeah. Uh, so a failed stab there on the Red Crested Skink. Uh, Pow Push keeps the Skink up. Dodge, keeping him alive. It's a Pow. The Red Crested Skink goes down on a Blitz. Uh, the ball is now free. Oh, great play there. Dropping that tackle guy back to keep the other skink in the backfield out of that, or at least limits his ability to swoop in and get the ball if the Dark Elves roll the one here. Yeah, uh, I think definitely the right move. Uh, so given that, given that Goffmog is only playing for a draw, do we see uh, the Dark Elves redeploy into a cage before we go for the ball pickup? Yes, looking yeah. exactly like what's going to happen here. It's going to end up no, with a guy... There's no pressure for a touchdown. None at all. He could literally just put all those Dark Elves around the ball and make the Lizards roll the bad dice. No, goes for the Witch Elf. He's going to go for the win here, I think, Goffmog. Like, really go for the win. Uh, does the Witch Elf end up inside this cage? Uh, Possibly, but that cage also <laughs> has a Croxagore on one of the bases. Well, he's got two Crocs on that cage, so the Witch Elf just running south on its own... Did you see Rob's comment? I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bombardier Rob, I'll end up on a list. <laughs> on the upside, you sound like a pirate. Oh, yeah, you sound a great <laughs> pirate, Rob. Uh, are we going to see a dodge away for one of these guys to anchor the cage or just leave it open? Um, this... I mean, 
there's the problem that if they if they dodge with these dark elves, um, it's three plus game chance. over. Yeah, it's it's three plus game over, and also um, even if they succeed, a cro that leaves a Croxigor open to blitz into the um, tackles out of the witch elf. Yeah, gets the first dodge, so gets the lineman away to anchor the cage down south. Grab us in chat. This is looking like game here. It certainly does. Mm. It's mm. not looking great for the, for the skinks. Let's move the arrow even further along. Uh, Grubman said I would have tried to force the score earlier. I'm not sure. Um, I think Woodrum's been really piling on the pressure. He's taken, what, two or three risky skink blitzes? Had some, yeah, had some uh, brave uh, we've shots. Seen, we've seen... Uh, like with uh, the red crest just getting them into the cage. Uh, Rob says he's um, back to the priest orc Kickstarter. I haven't heard of that. He means he means pirate. Yeah, the orcs of oh. pirates, pirate bay. Uh, yes, yeah. I saw that. It's very um, cool. There was there was there's been quite a few like pirate orc uh, ones. I remember seeing one. Uh, that was like it's 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 a goblin and orc thing, and they're selling for the two teams. Uh, yeah, that came that came out a few months ago, I think. It's very yeah, no, it's it's, it's vibrantly painted. Yeah, there's, there's some great teams out there at the moment, and we've yeah. got two more big orc teams coming from Grebo and Willie's Miniatures as well. So this is like orc month. Uh, okay, so get your crocs out. Turn six. The uh, the cage is open. And there is a move. So just tags the ball carrier. That is not a bad move. I mean, yes, the Witch Elf's got dodge, but that minus one is going to make it a little bit harder. Uh, Grublats just says there just aren't enough Lizardmen left here to stop it. Crocs gets a block. It's just a pushback. Um, that assassin going toe to toe with the Crocs are going getting away with it. Uh, oh, Steve says the Leprechaun team looks amazing. Yeah. Um, Ian Triplo, he's on the podcast this week. Um, in fact, I need to put that out to our Patreons, actually. I need to do that now. I'll do that in a minute. Um, seeing how they were positioned for a few teams, yeah, he's, he started printing them out. Uh, they are brilliant. Are they a halfling or a goblin? Uh, halfling, goblin, dwarf. I think they've got positionals for all of oh, those they're, teams. They just say. Yeah, it's uh, one of your. Multifunctional so stunty teams. Really cool. They've done some great, great sculpting here. Okay, so Widrum in the tank here, trying to figure out how to pull this off. Um, probably wishing he'd gone for the, the, the Croxagor Blitz there. Just to have a shot. It's going to be skink to the front to tag the cage. There's got to be a Blitz in here somewhere. Yeah. With one dodge, they technically can get the touchdown with two go for it. Uh, I think, which are some movements have another. Yeah. So, another thing to point out here is that the the tackle guy down the back... Oh, he trips over again. Oh, red-crested skink tries. The, the stunty heroism here is on point. But what I was saying is that this guy in the backfield, the Dark Elf Blitzer that's tagging the lone skink, what that's doing is applying that tackle to a stunty player with dodge who is poised to take a quick score. So yeah. that guy, Jeffrey, is there ready. So if they do in any way, shape or form pick up the ball, they can, they can, they've got that stretch play and he gets push. Um, it, yeah, I like that positioning. And just pushing in one square further away from the edge for the lockdown brawlers. Here goes for the stab on the Crocs. He's going for the big play. I love that. I love that. Going for the cheeky stab on the big guy. Stabbing a tree is the ultimate challenge. <laughs> um, when I played in Mana Bowl, I had a there's a there's a star player for the Chaos Halflings that's got multi block and stab. He's he's just a halfling, but he comes with yeah. multi block and stab. And um, I ended up playing against a, a proper normal boring halfling team in the first round, <laughs> and just went to town just trying to stab these trees. Uh, needless to say, he died. Um, oh. But it was a great game, and just trying to stab. And I had two chainsaws as well, and some 
claw frenzy guys. That's a great team. Just so much murder. Yeah, he died, but he 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 tried very very. Have, have, you, seen, uh, have you seen? I'm sure. Have you seen the, the movie Reign of Fire? With the I dragons. Ah, oh, there's a scene where Matthew McConaughey jumps off a building with an axe and trying to <laughs> like to try and flying chop a dragon. I mean, he obviously <laughs> dies, but it's just what a way to go. Uh, it was kind of like that. Okay, so drops the skink. It is a blitz. So this dark elf is now able to swoop around south and pressure. I mean, to be fair, this witch elf is not really in any danger at all. It's got a, a, a two plus hand off to um this guy in the middle lineman number eight yeah and then that's just a one two three one, four two, five three. yeah six. that's a great touchdown oh wait no it's not because they're moving six if the blitzer had moved into the end of the end zone there it would have been a two plus two plus oh it would have had to go for a throw so it would have been a two plus two plus two plus for a touchdown there's the first one and he probably isn't going to go for the stretch play isn't going to go for it into the end zone probably just poise him on the side um, because there's no the chances of the skink team dropping the ball and getting it back over to this guy and scoring is so limited that it's probably better yeah. for Gothmog to just loiter on the edge yeah there you go we see the camping but that is good look at that screen happened there uh, Grubnut says question is does Widrum want to score no I think Widrum does I don't think Gothmog needs to um, gets a go for it with that guy though. Happy to just shield. Look at that defense. Um, best thing for Widrum here maybe to go for a two plus uh, two die blitz with Peyton to push this guy into the touch into the end zone. Yeah, um, probably. Uh, uh, I mean that gives him that gives, gives him one turn to equalize, and then that doesn't. Yeah, on, on a riot, that's it. But an equal, a, a tied game yeah. here does not win it for the Skinks. This is this is tough. I think Grubnuts may have called it at the right time. Uh, I mean, there's still some murdering to done to be done, but this has been a, a really solid series by the Dark Elves. What do you think? The so, main yeah, yeah. sorry, oh, oh, sorry, what was that? No, after you, Matt. Uh, I was going to say, uh, yeah, the um, the skink. He Got goes pushback, pow! He does drop him. Uh, he's going to take the pushback here and, and go for the touchdown, surely. Yeah. Uh, we do have a re-roll here for Widrum. I think he, he's already chosen not to use the uh, the re-roll because it says... Um, oh, yeah, you're right. Blue team. Couch to shoes. Uh, block dice. Is there any benefit to choosing the pow at <laughs> all here? Oh, no, he did re-roll. Oh, power pushback. Oh. That's, that so, was, what, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, is there any benefit to Gothmog choosing the power at this point? Oh, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, we get a touchdown for Gothmog. A second one for the Dark Elves. Uh, and now we're back to 9 versus 10, I think. Uh, yeah, 9 versus 10 players. Tough, uh, tough all, game. Uh, Grubnut says, why didn't he take the corner blitz? I think he was trying to force the touchdown so he could play yeah. for a riot turn eight touchdown. Uh, it's going to be a really a really small scale here. Um, could, have passed, could have pushed adjacent. Yeah, I think forcing that touchdown to set up for the opportunity to get a riot into uh, at least an opportunity to get a second touchdown because a tie would finish him in, in the standings in second place. He wouldn't win the tournament, but but tying this game does pop him in... Oh, no, he doesn't. It pops him in third place behind Cribblebobble Pie, uh, who's got seven points at the moment. Who is playing what team? Uh, that was the Nippon team. Actually, we got a... Oh, uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> Best of luck, then. Yeah, I know. This is going to be tough. So, need a three on the kickoff here. That is a one in 18 chance oh. of a riot. Yeah. Look at that. Gothmog playing a heck of a solid game there. Knows what to expect. Um, the really sad thing is that if a riot is gone, now with all these players here, we might not see another red-crested skink blitz. Very sad. 
Uh, we've got one red crested skate. Look at that. That guy's dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's deployment for a uh, for an all in left hand side. I, yeah. I would love to see a riot and a touchdown here. Oh yeah, that'd be that great. Uh... I don't think it would massively change anything. No, but it'd be so club ball, wouldn't it? <laughs> Grub <Grubbler>. Hundred <laughs> percent murder ball coming here. Uh, do you think that's um, that's the one turn touchdown scoring possibility here for them? I, well, I wouldn't even know where to start with this. This could I be, don't know how chain pushes work. Uh, I, with sidestep, without sidestep, because sidestep guy got punched in the face quite yeah. hard uh, in turn five of the second half. Oh, brutal. Only just out of the game. Right. Yeah, I don't know about one turn touchdowns. I stick to shambling down the pitch at movement four. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and failing dodges with ghouls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With edge five goals sometimes. Oh man, that is just a, that's just horrific. Uh, one a one is a one is a one. So deploy yeah. Uwe the ball. Where are we going to see the ball kick? Can't score, can kill. Not a bad strategy ever. Uh, he's not. Are we still deploying? Oh. All going even heavier oh, there on the right hand side. Back what a game. Quick snap. Not Quick what snap. I needed. And a very good kick for the Dark Elf. Forgot how to set up there. Uh, I think Grubnuts called it probably a cheeky bit of murder ball, murder ball here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, after the game, should we go into the yes, uh, absolutely. voice channel they're in and just congratulate them on their game? Yeah, because this uh, has been. I'll just, a, I'll just ask in the Discord if they're cool with that. Um, uh, Widrum suggested it earlier. Um, oh, he did. Yeah, I love it. You know what? We we got the numbers slightly wrong on this. Cribble Obble Pie is at seven, and Goffmog is at six. So. Oh, no, no, we didn't. It's fine. Goffmog, uh, a draw would still have put him into uh, the the first place, I think. So, uh, But would have needed good tiebreakers. And he's in a good spot here. He's got one casualty up. Uh, yeah, one casualty up and one touchdown up. So tiebreaker's going to be plus eight. It's the kick. Ooh. Worst possible situation. That's just nasty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cannot get the one turn. Uh, Widger with the classic elf versus bash final ticket. <laughs> yep, it's uh, it's also a very, 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 very valid Skaven setup as well. <laughs> uh, so we may see some some play here that is is just plain better. A uh, quick snap could have helped with some chain blocks. How, how does he need to do this? He could get three dice on this guy anyway. Oh, brutal. Just gets a push. Gives him one extra square here. Follows up. Needs to position into the top square. And then take another push with this guy. He could do this. Oh, yeah, Rob. Come on in the chat as well. Absolutely. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Uh, Matt, we could be seeing a one-turn touchdown push scenario here. That would be absolutely crazy, but it'd be brilliant. Crocs needs to go north. Yeah, and then, Crocs needs to stand there. And and then, exactly there. Austin then, takes the block. And then a million dodges. Yeah. And, also, and a pass, a, a stunty pass. <laughs> stunty uh, pass and a handoff. Oh, Bonehead. Oh, no. It's not the end. It's not the end. Jeffrey can swing here underneath the two and uh, then Matteo can take a, a leftwards I love how Fumble just doesn't have uh, different like random generated names for different teams yeah. it's all human ones <laughs> you've got like oh they do have uh, they do have some I think it's just the secret teams don't because I had a load of very 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 posh sounding um, snotlings and trolls <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. okay it's all on the ball now oh, oh. 
What a superb oh. game. Let's give them some cheering fumble. Um, oh, man. What a... What a game. What a game. Absolutely crazy. Uh, that would have been... That would have been... Yeah, Grubnut says, Savage. Gets all the chain blocks they need. Gets the... Um, gets the quick snap to give him the extra movement. Oh, fails to pick up the ball. I mean, to be fair, there were still many other roles to be made. But just to see it was, uh, was pretty mighty. So... I'm going to show uh, really quickly before we drop into this voice chat. Yeah. Because uh, I'm going to ask these guys this as well. If we were to play this tournament again, um, completely from the beginning, and you had to pick a different team, uh, which one would you pick? Well, talking about Chaos Halflings, is ooh, that is definitely a team to play. Uh, it's a Stunty League team again, so you're under. Yeah. But, but actually, one team I think is would be really good in 11s but i is the tree man team tree man team so you say no, it'd be really good in 11s i think so because you've got a ton of tree men and the sprites yeah. are basically move six snotlings, snotlings with armor six yeah. they're just better uh and they're the same price <laughs> they're the same price it balances out the team you can get quite a lot we're running it so you can get a uh, deep rope yeah, you get Deep Root. It, Carla Von Kiel is just a no-brainer in any team ever. Um, but, uh, yeah, what about you, sir? It's too many to choose, isn't it? <laughs> Dwarf Engineers. Oh, the Engineers. They've got Bombardier. They've got Chainsaw. They've got uh, a Hail Mary Pass. They've got all of the fun skills. And uh, on top of that, they are um, so slow that they will always lose. Uh, and they've got a Death Roller. So, <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Lockdown Brawlers are the winner. Uh, let's go here. Let's see. How do we see the whole tournament? How do we see the whole tournament? Uh, I think that's it. I think it's just gone forever. Gone with the wind. Surely not. That's absolutely absurd. Uh, uh, can I do it by if we, it, if we click on show schedule, yeah. It, Ah, oh, well done. Show skin. Yep, there you go. So we've got the tournament members there. Oh, Rob in chat says, ah, I wanted to see that work. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So right. are the guys in... Yeah, should we drop into... It's the game one chat. Let's drop here. And right. Let's go to uh, game one. Sorry. I will see you in the chat. The format that I stupidly put together, the best you can hope for is a good game. Hey, guys. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be bad. Mm -hmm. That was good fun. Guys, it's Ben here, and uh, I think Matt's in here as well. I, yeah, can you hear me? Incredible game. Hey. Yeah, that was good fun, that game. Good fun. Fun game. Oh, man. Okay. Really, really tough. I just... Yeah, I was just, I was just saying to Rob that that one noise is going to haunt me for the rest of my life. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Now, if I'm right, you play in the, in the same local club as Rob, so is there a chance that Rob's going to change his ringtone to that at all? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. Uh, Rob's, Rob's down in Wales. I'm up in the Lake District. So oh, that's all right. Clubs. I'm, yeah, I'm North West Warriors up here, up in the, up in the Lake. Oh, so. man. So but I'm, just... I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure a few of the lads have been, have been watching <laughs> and I'm going to get absolutely abused with the noise. Of, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Seriously, though, Widrum, incredible effort with that skink team. Uh, we saw some great moments yeah. throughout your your tournament. The red-crested skinks, you just, you just love them. You just love them. I mean, I love them. They're great. Like, well done playing them. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I yeah. haven't really seen them, those guys before those, that much and play these particular teams, kings that much. That's that's what's so exciting about this tournament is you get these uh, you get these teams and I'm gonna say Gothbog running the Dark Elves. Uh, it was great to see these wacky teams played against a real proper Blood Bowl team and give them a run for the money. You played your heart out, sir. I, in several games I've watched with some excellent... I learned a lot from watching you with Dark Elves. Um, oh, and, uh, I didn't know you were watching it. Yeah, I, was, I saw... I think um, I think Matt and I dropped into a second part of... Um, yeah, there was a... Uh, against it, the Ninjas. The, yeah. Was it against oh, the yeah. 
Yeah. Ben, Gothmog hasn't realised you've been streaming and doing chat on all the game. Until we got, we, we got chatting on this game, and he was just like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> yeah, it's been great watching. Uh, it's been brilliant watching. I, I love to see the two assassins. Are you normally a, a big assassin fan for Dark Elves? Oh uh, no, not not at all. I'm very used to them actually, but for this tournament, it felt like um, there were so many guys. In a secret weapons, I need my yeah, as well. Okay, so cool. Just uh, going beef with the fluff because I, 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 was just, I was just jumping on the chance to, to play this lockdown, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I didn't realize I could choose any secret league team. Oh, so well, I was like, oh, oh. the dance. Well, oh, <laughs> con con congratulations on accidentally Too winning much. the tournament, then. <laughs> 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 it's great to see that the Secret League and the Stunty League, well, not so much the Stunty, but the, the Secret League and the regular teams seem to be relatively balanced against each other. I know we've just had a regular team one, but... It, oh, it that was a close game. It was close, yeah. Like, yeah. There was a... Yeah. 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 Down, you definitely can't down put that to a few, Secret down League. Down to a few big dive, yeah. Oh, we've yeah. seen that throughout yeah. the tournament. I mean, with the Nippon team and the, the rugby team really smashing face. I mean, let's not bury the lead here the snotling team was obviously overpowered um oh. along with <laughs> <laughs> the snotling team is just disgusting was... uh, big fan of the so when i say disgusting I, 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 I do mean disgustingly squishy <laughs> you. uh, yeah, you're welcome to all the casualties everybody i'm so glad i didn't play against yeah. Goffmog's assassins uh with my armor five guys that would have been Good. incredible we'd still be <laughs> Ben, I'm, ben, I'm just looking at when I'm looking at the league. You actually came second for the most casualties taken. A Wood Elf player got 19 casualties. And oh 18. my days! Oh my <laughs> days! Did get absolutely hooned. That's incredible. I'm, I'm going to be crunching the numbers, and I'll, I'll hope to do like a Facebook Live or a Zoom or something on Saturday evening. That would be brilliant, Rob. So all all the different great. fatty type things, but. Um, whilst you two are here, what was your favourite moment of the tournament? Uh, oof. I enjoyed that game. I think my one of my favourite is just well for me, just red red crested skinks just diving on in there and <laughs> shocking the hell out of people. They're uh, so good, they? Yeah, oh, I loved them. The but, great yeah. thing is, all, all you need is a single double skill up, and you can have them on a standard lizard team. Yeah. Uh, which means you can, Actually, you can. Yes, no, I've not even thought of that. Yeah, yeah you I can. You can, there, you yeah. can relive this moment on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you save 10k, but yeah, I mean, you don't get the Croxigors, and oh man, boneheads hit you hard a couple don't, of times. Don't yeah, one it. round that, where like three the, of them went off. The one round like, plane went well, over I the did, pitch, and they were all. Just yeah, yeah the it. three of them went off, and the fourth one, I was just like that. Uh, do you know what? I'm not even running the risk of doing anything with him. He can just yeah. stay where he is. I don't want that th that fourth door. Oh, I, think, man. Was, I think it was in the. Well, I don't think it was the game against you, Ben. I think it was my second game uh, against the other lizard, uh, against Morpheus. Yes. Uh, I the... think I had, I had four of them go in one turn, and I was just like, oh, yeah. was head in hand moment. Yeah, no, Matt, uh, Matt did call the third bonehead that turn as well. And uh, yeah, <laughs> he said, "Surely you can't get a third one." And boom! I don't worry. I was I was ready there to say anything but a one on the fourth one, but you didn't go for it, which was probably wise. <laughs> yeah, I'm go I'm looking forward to rewatching the to watching the commentary and seeing what you guys had to say. Oh, it was a it was a really <laughs> brilliant game. Uh, some some great play, some some gutsy play, and some very strategic play. Goffmog, one thing we did notice where you moved the the tackle Dark Elf Blitzer into the backfield to tag the lone skink to make sure that uh, Widrum couldn't get the stretch play. That was that was very good. We we, we like that. We were like that. We noticed that. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you only need one one skink with some luck, and then you're losing. Yeah, no, you you exactly. Yeah. Right. How do you beat that? What eliminate that possibility? We got uh, one of our guys in chat says the chain pushing at the end was excellent uh, as well, which I, I have to I have to second the motion there. That was a yeah, that was a I that, that was see that come off. That was a that, terrifyingly that was solid effort. Guys, yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
No, fantastic. It, 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 I, I'm, I'm a bit uh, sad I missed the, all the, the fluff and st all the effort you put into this uh, tournament around it. I was just playing a few games and only like, oh, <laughs> you know, just reading it and commentary. It, it's brilliant. I'm, I'm really happy to. It was great fun to play this game and chatting with you as well. It's uh, really nice. Yeah. So. Yeah, I really I enjoyed chatting to you during the game as well, mate. That was good fun. It's it's brilliant to see that. Another thing, another comment we've got in chat is uh, said Rid Ridrum. Um, what were your what were your thoughts when you were doing that that last attempt at the uh, the chain push and how everything kind of came together for you? Oh, that just I you know, just had to go for it. It was one of those. Uh, uh, I think I tag, did a tag the I went to move the uh, red crested. I thought, no, if I get this right, I need my red crested where he is just yeah. to be able to, just in case the ball pops upfield and then he can get it. And then pow push. I was like, no, you get <laughs> Rerolled it. And unfortunately, we, we had a couple of times my mic drew, I dropped connection with the mic. So I was speaking away to Carl and saying, ah, I'm going to get you, going to get you, and all this. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> there was nothing going on in my I'm talking to myself sat in my kitchen. <laughs> uh, right, just go for, go for the re-roll. Went for the re-roll, and all sorts of expletives came out when another power. Oh. Uh, <laughs> just... There was a expecting someone. <laughs> no, con congratulations uh, to Goffmog, and congratulations to all the coaches that played some really, really brilliant games. And want to just say a quick thank you to Rob for running a superb tournament. Um, good That's hustle, Rob. Brilliant. Um, I, I mean, you, you've thanked me several times over the past couple of streams. I'm well, what, once a week. I've, I've not had to do once the tournament started. You guys, everyone playing has been so great. It's just kept going. Everyone's put so much effort and enthusiasm into it. I've had very, very little to do. So, uh, it has been fantastic. fantastic. It really has been fantastic. The, the, the real well. question is, if we lined up another one, would you guys be interested for another yeah. round? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. going to give me a, a proper secret league team. Oh, can, can Gotham go what, two what, for two? <laughs> what teams would you play if, uh, if there were another of these tournaments? Oh, I really kind of like the Zeech team. The big oh. hands and extra hand uh, just running around and jumping in. Yeah, and doing they're, they're really cool. I really cool. like the idea of this each team. Yeah, the two uh, We saw that, we saw yeah. that big hands uh, get a really good pick, off, didn't, uh, pick oh, up, didn't we? That was a great, that was a yeah. great match to see that, that Beastman just awesome. run in and steal the ball. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's a funny moment. I'm trying out this uh, Slotnish team. Uh, really cool. Is that the Slanesh team? The big is that the big Slanesh team with the uh, uh, not not the demons of Slanesh. <laughs> oh bless you. The, oh, the, yeah, just the just, just the slash team with the uh... you yeah, they're, they're pretty with, cool. With claw and and the uh, the four on the, your line. Yeah, the yeah. the general agility mutation on just every player. That's really cool. Got some yeah. uh, some some chat here saying squigs or ethereal. Um, yeah, no, those are those are both great uh, well. oh, look funny. It, uh, it's a I just love playing them. Uh, How about you, Rob? What would you uh, What would you play if? Uh, I, I mean, if, again? if this happens again, as lockdown bowl can kind of season two type thing, which it may or may not do, depending on whether widespread restrictions on people gaming are still in place. Um, I'd probably do it so people can carry on with the teams they've got or start other teams at a similar kind of power level. Um, I've yeah. not even thought about those rules yet, in which case I'd probably carry on my own Kingdoms team because they're fun. Oh, they were really yeah. fun. Um, yeah, those look great. <laughs> Hail Mary Pass for the win. <laughs> if not, the Bombardier. I love the Bombardier Ogre. I mean, He's got Bombardier strong arm now. Ju just got strong arm, so, mm. you know. Dangerous. Um, <laughs> Very yeah. dangerous. But there's so many fun teams. I mean, it's the it's difficult. The reason I ended up with the ogres is I basically rolled randomly almost. <laughs> thing, and it's just right. I, I don't know. There's the wear wear team which look fun. Um, there's some of the stunty teams I'd like to play more of. I the rugby team, um, four nations. Amazing! I don't know. I I don't think there is a team I wouldn't want to play. Yeah, there's a uh, there's enough teams for like 
four lifetimes of Blood Bowl. It's, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Challenge accepted. Um. <laughs> yeah, no. anyway, what we've been saying about keeping it going, even yep. after table, even after we can all get back to tabletop, which actually apparently from Monday, according to the according to the lads from my gaming club, we are looking at doing a six player tournament in somebody's uh, back garden because you know if six people can get together you can play in a back yeah. garden you can just go for it uh, in right. wales you can't but in england is two people from uh, two households of up to six people can meet uh, in wales yeah. it's, it's yeah. two households i think in england it's just six people as long as they social yeah, distance they, 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 six yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I, Makes yeah. it even back more confusing. Wales rules. But my yeah. is back garden blood bowl is going to become a thing. Yeah, I have one of those, have one of those like <laughs> claw grabber sticks and move the minis with that. <laughs> Not a yeah. bad idea. Might be worth but, it. I've well, been playing. I think. Yeah, I think golf mug's the same. We've both been playing tabletop for years, but if you look golf mug, I think over three thousand games now on Bumble. Uh, I've been. I moved, I moved I cities. Think, I, uh, I can't play. I can't play in a tabletop anymore because I I moved cities from away from my friends. So, uh, um, right. Fumble is Fumble is great. So I play too much on this. <laughs> I would say maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's, it, it's brilliant. It, it is. Yeah. It really is. And yeah, I've been uh, playing. I've been playing in the Waterfall League for I think the last five years, but generally just playing league games that's it as well as playing a lot league of league games I, I really like playing leagues I, i'm running the, the swedish league it's like uh, in the 60th season now oh like, wow you know, yeah so wow. it's been uh, i joined that 15 years ago and it's still oh, i'd hate to see the running. teams in that league <laughs> uh, we, yeah we they all get smashed in there <laughs> that is absolutely crazy Absolutely. Grubnuts agree. has been putting a lot of things in chat. Uh, just um, the Ethereal team. I didn't play the Ethereal team. It was Stevie126 who played that. I played the Elementals. Uh, and they were great. Elementals are really cool. Uh, uh, and there are four kinds of them. So you can play them for four times as long without. No, that's actually very uh, true. <laughs> I like that's... the air version. I think the water version might be slightly better. Um they got better like armor. The version because they're all friends in with no block. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a terrible idea. I mean, I, uh, my Yeti has made me want to play a, a frenzy spam team. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking though that frenzy might be good on one player and not good on the entire team. But you know, uh, I'll find that somehow. It is, it is definitely interesting. I mean, corner, <laughs> corner, great for that. Yeah. Love a bit of corn. Cool. Um, is it the uh, well, Savage Orgs? That, that, that team, is that the. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Secret League of Hedge. Give me a second. Uh, Savage Orgs. Yeah, they're kind oh, of fast. like corn, except they get black orcs as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, is it is the Night Goblins or Forest Goblins? Or what is it? Uh, there are night goblins. I'm not sure what they do. Oh, the forest goblins are the good. Forest one. goblins are good. They've got lots of stabbers, I think. Loads they? of stab. That's what Rich Saxby likes to run as well. Uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at some savage orc teams here. Yeah. So basically, basically, your savage orcs is your regular orcs with one less armor, and everyone gets frenzy except the troll. Two, 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 two less armor. Their armor seven. Yeah, the savage orcs. Well, they get frenzy and thick skull. Yeah. So they're going awesome. down more, but they're getting stunned instead of taking off the pitch. Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. The there's no um, goblins either. No, they've got a troglodyte instead of a troll, which is looks like a croxigore. Really, it, it's better. It, it's way better. It's a croxigore with prehensile tail, uh, with disturbing presence, and one less movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a horrible big that. guy. That's a great looking team. Add that to the list. <laughs> team number twenty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, fantastic. Um, well, guys, thank you all so much. And thank you for letting us stream it. Matt, thank you for coming on. Rob, thank you for running it. Everybody out there, thank you for playing it. Congratulations again to Gothmog and commiserations to Widrum. But quite frankly, getting this far and doing that well with a secret team, with a secret team with Stunzi players, it's just superb. Um, yeah, well done. Yeah, well done, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Rob, did you just want to recap on what you're plan kind of planning to do for Saturday? Uh, so Saturday... I haven't been organised enough to have a firm plan in place, but <laughs> sometime Saturday evening, and I'll get the details out 
tomorrow. I'll either do like a Facebook live type thing or possibly a Zoom call type thing. Feel free to give me your preferences. Just going through, reviewing what's happened um, and awarding a few prizes. Obviously, we know who's got first place, but um, <laughs> that form I've been sending out. So if everyone has filled in that, it would be useful. Um with things like their favourite memory moments and that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'll go through some of that and try and, you know, normally at the end of the tournament, someone stands up and says something. So it'll be an equivalent to that. Brilliant, Rob. That's absolutely cool. fantastic. So it'll probably be like eight or nine o'clock on Saturday evening. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely great. Well, guys, thank you all very, very much. I'm going to close down the stream and sign off now. So thank you all very much. Thank you guys for watching. And we will see you for the next tournament, hopefully not too far away in the future. Cheers, guys. See you, man.